So, yeah. how is everyone? Good, good. Wait, are we? You guys see the recording thing? Mm-hmm. Yes. Somewhere around here. Good. I'm good. How are you guys? I don't know. We've been talking like we. Ha- whenever I start recording, we have to pretend like we just started talking, but we were just talking for like ten minutes now. Well, it gives it gives people a little bit of intrigue, you know, and that intrigue is gonna you know help them want to become a patron to know what the behind the scenes is like you feel me yeah. <laughs> good that's good yeah um, gotta get that plug at the top <laughs> oh yeah I, I see i'm not good at this guys if you guys if you, anybody wants to join th- these discussions uh, become a patron link in the description oh vikram is here now but by the way, you know the reason why I have to mention people that you know if you want to join the discussion, become a patron, is because I'm too lazy to put the text. You know, I used to put up here throughout the conversation because my computer would be useless for like an hour if I wanted to render a video. So I'm like, just know, like right at the beginning. Uh, okay, Vikram. Vikram, why do you keep picking up fights with everybody in, in every group that you go <laughs> everywhere? <laughs> Everywhere that you end up, like people are like, oh, like you just like poke at people. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I don't know. Right? I don't. I don't want you to start it here as well. But I don't know. Like it's just like, oh my god, Vikram. Like I have to. You you just set fires, and I have to. I'm I'm. I, I usually pretend like I'm not. I don't. I don't want to get involved in this. I'm not seeing it. <laughs> right. Anyways. It's fine. It was, a, it was an um, interesting show. Okay, so um, you got? Did you guys see what? What happened? I don't know. Wait, you, you, oh, you, you didn't see the shit storm in the patron chat before uh, you created this call? No, that's what I'm referring to. Yeah, that's what I'm laughing at. Okay. Uh, was... <laughs> anyways, yeah. Like, well, when I was in there. I was... Part of me wanted to just not respond, but then the other part of me was like, you know, like try and like poke it a bit more, try and try and get like try and see how far it can go. So in my head, I was internally like deciding, should I keep going or just let it be? Yeah, yeah, but there's a way let to there's a way to have these discussions without like making. You see my discussions. I talk to people who are fundamentally disagree with. And I'm I I don't I, they end up feeling comfortable with me and talking to me, you know what I mean? I think you sometimes do the opposite. People that are mostly in line with what you believe in, you end up you end up making them uh, think like you are, you know, I don't know, just poking them in the ways that they don't want to be poked. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe I I have to think about it because like internally I will always have the bias that I am right, but I feel like it's for everybody, so I always have to kind of spend more time it, thinking about it. So maybe it, I'm wrong. I'll just have to think. It's not about just being right. It's about making people who are wrong feel comfortable to tell you why they think they're right. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah it's okay. Anyways, what I wanted to talk about today is this news about. I don't know how, like, I'm going to say, okay. I'm, I'm really always scared of t- telling people's names because people are like, no. So Ad- Adele, Adele, right? Yeah, Adele. Mm-hmm. See, Adele, she, did you see her picture? Yeah, yep. she's looking good. She's very sc- Good? What about, really you, Susanna? See, th- this is what I was saying last time, and you were like, oh, I don't like people. So... Yeah, I agree with you. She's looking good because she's lost weight. Okay? So do we agree that being chubby is ugly? You just said she looks great. <laughs> um, going to be saying... Uh, okay. Uh, cutting through the bullshit, basically, yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, that was pretty straightforward. Okay, so... I think our uh, conversation was a little bit about beauty standards and what is acceptable for a partner to say about another, your partner's desirability. I thought about it more afterwards and I changed my opinion a little bit. I think part of where I was coming from is having dealt with people in the past who were very controlling over my appearance and how 
that was a terrible experience for me. So well, I mean, that's what I, I had like a past experience informing the way I was thinking then. But I thought about your position more and I understand where you're but, coming from. But I was more referring to saying, telling people that they're like fat, that you're beautiful, even if you're fat. I mean, if you say, if you say, if you have to tell people that are fat, that they're still beautiful, you're kind of acknowledging because you don't tell people like, oh, even if you're fit, you're still beautiful because you just, you know, why wouldn't you say that? Like, oh my God, you're so fit, but don't worry, you're still beautiful. Like, what are you talking about? Of course I'm fit. That's what it means. Like, nobody says that, right? So the fact that you have to, you, ha you need to tell people that even if you're fat, you're beautiful shows that the, you actually not, right? Well, I think it's just mainly because culturally speaking, it's frowned upon to be heavier. Not necessarily that they're trying to be like sort of by accident calling them ugly. I think it's just like understanding that culturally speaking, people don't prefer people who are heavier. You're still beautiful, so fuck everybody else. Or screw well, everybody you're else. not though. You're fat. No, oh, right. I'm just trying to steal <laughs> men. Why someone would oh. say, say something like that. No, I mean, like... Vince, Vince is right. Like It is very culturally dependent. Not and, really. really. Yeah, you don't think so? There, there are eating camps. There are feeding camps in different cultures to make women fatter because historically, it's been a sign that your family is wealthy if you're fat. Right? Yeah, but okay, not that fat. Okay, so people. Okay, that's true. <laughs> okay, so yeah, people like if you live in a play in okay, so people like oh, I heard that before many times. Like historically, they like chubbier people. Yeah, compared to poor. People that look like bones and they're going to look like they're starving <laughs> to death. And like, oh my God, like this person is not, you know. And they were talking about like a little bit chubby, a little bit like curvy. They're not talking, we're not talking about round people, okay? We're not talking people that are like, you know, look like circles, okay? Uh, <laughs> those people were never attractive ever in history. Um Unless they had a fetish for it, and that's an exception, and we cannot, like, that's not, we're going to ignore that, because that's a very small group of people, okay? Yeah, and that's I'm, a totally different scenario anyways. Yeah, yeah. but it's, the, the thing is that a lot of people say, and I'm sorry if you're watching this and you're fat, I mean, every, all of us have something that is not good about us, right? And the, but, but I'm sorry, if you're fat, that's one of the things that is not good about you. I'm, I'm sure I, I, have, I, I have many things that is not good about me. But being obese is not one of them, okay? But there's other things. But you, you, you being obese, that's not good, okay? And anybody that tells you it's okay, they're lying to you. They're just trying to not hurt your feelings, okay? But, but I would say it's not good just because, just on the basis that it's unhealthy. If no. being fat were, to, I know, but I'd actually disagree with you in here then, because okay. if being fat had nothing to do with health, someone who is fat could just as easily be as healthy as someone who is skinny then to me it wouldn't matter because there are people out there who genuinely find a fetish in people who are heavier, and that's, that's okay, fine. So in the same way that thing, people find a fetish in people that are shorter. I mean, the health thing makes it this makes this a lot more important, okay? And yeah. when, when you add the health issue, then it's an easy case to make to, like, why you have to be fit. But that, we're beyond that. Like, I mean, if anybody thinks, like, oh, no, it doesn't matter if you're fat and the health things are, like, fat-shaming... You, I mean, you're way beyond, like, you know, I don't know if I could even change your mind. Like, I, you know, of course, being fat is not healthy, okay? But I would say that even, like, that's an easy way to get out of the discussion about what reality is when it comes to what we consider beautiful and what we consider ugly, okay? Because you're like, okay, it's unhealthy. Like, okay, I don't, it's an easy position for me to take. I'm taking the position of healthy versus unhealthy. I'm making it a little bit more difficult for you, okay? If they were both healthy the same amount, most people, the vast majority of people, consider the fit look more attractive than the fat look. The vast majority. And okay, if you were like, oh yeah, there's uh, some group of tiny group of people that like it. Well, good luck with that. Good luck. Like, there's way more obese people that pe than people that like obese people, okay? Mm -hmm. So good luck with that, okay? Yeah. But, I mean, it, I mean, people are lying to you. Like, oh, it doesn't matter. You look beautiful. You don't. You look ugly. The reason, the reason why fit people, the reason why fit people look more attractive 
is because the health the, the health is is basically signaling health okay yeah so it's like evolutionary like Oh damn! Look at that body. This person must be healthy. Those are some superior genes right there. I want to have babies with that, right? So the, <laughs> right? So let them that's... know. <laughs> what are you talking about eugenics, huh? <laughs> no eugenics. This is the exact opposite of eugenics. I'm talking in nature, like right. this is so. So every, everything, everything that you said, I 100% agree with. If you want to talk about why people find particular bodies attractive yeah you can point to the vitruvian scale you can point to symmetry all all, all of that stuff i 100 agree to me it just doesn't matter in the same way that it doesn't matter like for instance if i were to go out and work out i know that i'd be more attractive to women because they prefer someone who looks more muscle like not like a stick uh it just doesn't matter to me it's not that big of a deal and that's the same way i view the fat issue the only reason why i would advocate not being fat is because mainly for health reasons and that's just because i care about people yeah, but, but from, from a perspective from just like a beauty standard it really doesn't matter to me but i agree yeah. with everything that you said just oh i think i mean is uh yeah like, just go on with that before now okay uh yeah i think i i probably agree with everything vincent said and i guess the question i would have for Armin would be that do you think there is an objective standard of beauty the, no the, but there's a vast majority standard of beauty which is makes it very close to objective but not actually objective but what i'm saying is that it doesn't even it you say it doesn't matter to me and I'm saying it doesn't matter to me that it doesn't matter to you. This is just the truth, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, so <laughs> the thing is that uh, it, it's, fi it's fine that you, you're like, okay, okay, being fat makes me ugly. I don't care. I don't care if I want, I want to be ugly. I, I don't care if I'm ugly. It's fine, okay? As long as you understand that that's ugly, okay? As long as you're like, as, as long as you made choices now based on. If real information rather than choices based on fake information. If you are if you are lied to, like oh, being fit is is as just as as attractive as being fat. I'm like okay, then I'm going to be fat. Now you made a decision that maybe you actually care about being attractive, and you made the wrong decision. Okay, but if you like okay, know the reality and like okay, no, fit is more attractive than fat. But I don't give a shit if I'm attractive. Okay, great. But now you made decisions based on real information, rather than to. So yeah, so no, one hundred percent. I I completely agree. Um. Right. So I guess for the sake of this conversation, it's just purely. And we're defining ugly as being unpleasant to the eye for the vast majority of people, right? Right. 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 I mean, okay. yeah. It's unpleasant to, to the eye or not sexually attractive. Those are two different things. Well, You're I mean, there's crazy. there are people who are cute that I consider attractive, but I'm not sexually attracted to. Okay, but if somebody is pleasing to the eye and also in the category of people that you're usually sexually attracted to, then they're the same thing. Eventually, I mean, because Actually, for instance, no. the first girlfriend that I had, I thought she was adorable. I thought she was very attractive, but I wasn't sexually attracted to her until like three months into the relationship. Why did you start that relationship? Because I really, I thought she was cute. I loved hanging out with her. I had feelings for her. But for some reason, the feelings didn't turn sexual until into the future. You, you know, you can be friends it's, with people is that, without, is that, without. No, but I was romantically interested in her. Oh, okay. Like an asexual romantic. Kind of. I guess so. I'm not it, In the community, it's called demisexual. Okay. Yeah. Demi Get into this. Get into this uh, Tumblr vocabulary. Actually, I, I I like. It basically it. means that you're not sexually attracted to people until you have a certain baseline level of friendship or emotional security with them. Definitely not and, true for me. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, at that point, it becomes more sexually exciting. That's, That's my understanding of it, anyways. I thought it works usually the other way for most people. Well, probably for most people, I'm saying that's how this one label is defined. Hmm. I mean, but this is like a Tumblr identity, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the 72 genders? Yes, literally. <laughs> and there is. Reason... 
the reason why it's important to talk about this is because, like, here's the thing. If you, if I ask you, do you think less of less of a person that is fat compared to somebody that is fat? What do you guys say? It depends. Some people have health situations or medications that they have to take for other underlying conditions that make it close to impossible for them to lose weight in the same way that other people can. So for some people, it's not as much as w- within their control as for other people. And um, it can be so defined by underlying health factors that, I mean, I'm not going to judge someone to their face, right? Okay. Um, so let's flip that around. Would you think more of a person for being fit compared to somebody that is not fit? More of them in what way? Like respect them you're, more? Yeah, uh, you'd be like, well, good job. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't you're think kidding that me. Way. That stuff is hard. To be like, oh, like just <laughs> like, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> no, like think about it. Like imagine somebody says like, oh, I read. 50 books a month. You know, I, I think more of you if because you can, I mean, I can't read 50 books a month. I'm trying mm-hmm. to, but you can't. And like, I think I now hide, I now look, um, I see you, I respect you a bit more compared to before that I didn't know that, right? So does that mean that people who don't read 50 books a month, I think, I see, think less of them? Yeah. Compared to somebody that could read 50 books a month, I think less of them compared to that person, right? But what if you have a disability? What if you can't, you just like are not able to read that fast or you just have your visual learner? Yeah, there you might have like other reasons why you can't read 50 books a month, including myself, but I still see you less. See less of you compared to that person that could read 50 books a month. Like whatever is in your way that you can't read 50 books a month doesn't stop me from thinking less of you compared to that person that could read 50 books a month. I guess <laughs> I just don't think that way. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I see myself less compared to that person. You know, like, I, I, okay, so f- I was watching the video of this, this uh, girl who ran uh, 50 kilometers um she's so fit she does other exercises but she's just fit right and she doesn't run she's just like i'm just gonna pick up running right now with no training and she runs 50 kilometers just with no training damn i like holy fuck like i can <laughs> like how like what um just because she's just just fit i don't know how she does it but i'm never gonna be able to do that I don't know why she's just genetically probably superior to me in many different ways. And she just uh, dedicates a lot more time. But I see like in that department, I think less of myself than her. So if I see less of my less of my compared to her, I see myself like less of a person. Then I would do that with other people as well. Not, you know, like, why would I do it with like, why would I have that judgment on myself compared to her? But with other people, like, oh, I'm not going to be judgmental. Of course I'm going to be. And people that say I'm not going to judge, be judgmental, they're so full of shit. You're judging people the very second you lay lies on a person, you're automatically judging. You can't even, you can't stop judging. You're like, you're like try, try not judging. It's impossible. I view people less on, on specific attributes. So if someone who is buff, right, at those parks that they, that they, pull up whatever if i see someone that's really buff i'll think more of them when it comes to their health and their fitness of course i'll think less of them interestingly enough i think less of them intellectually because i associate people who are buff with being dumb as well mainly probably because (laughs) i subconsciously think that they're spending so much time working out that they don't spend any time reading or anything like that um but i but i don't think they're a better person like i don't think they have more value than i do yeah, but you again, you're passing judgment. Yeah, I am. Whatever, whatever judgment it is, your value, you, you're still passing judgment. I mean, you just, well, you didn't, you don't think they have less, more value, but you actually assume they have less value because you just judge them to be less intelligent. 
but that but uh, that depends on whether or not I'm associating intelligence as part of the general equation for value. I view value as just generally speaking, anything with the ability to have conscious sentience has the same equal value. And however they choose to change their attributes is up to them. Wait, so you're thinking like, like every instance, I, like for instance, I I'm genuinely thinking of becoming a vegan because of that. So you think that? No, okay, that doesn't make sense. How do you define value? Okay, so because treating people equally and treating giving people the same rights does should not be dependent on their value. I think. Like what, what should it depend on? The, their capacity to experience pain or pleasure. Oh, I guess I was using that synonymously. Why? If you can feel more pain, you're more valuable. Oh no! I mean, I guess I'm just using a more colloquial word right. for value. I wasn't value. If you if you want to define ba- value, sh- is t- is about worth. Mm-hmm. So you have to be able to give something or do something to be valuable. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, a, 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 a bunny cannot be as valuable as a scientist. There's no way. Does, so, do you think a bunny has worth in general? Yeah, they're for eating, but <laughs> like, <laughs> really, not on its hate. not on its very own. Yeah. Um, I mean, some value based on its ability to feel pain. No, hmm. and I don't think treat treatment. Uh, it should has nothing to do with value. Treatment, like if you have zero value and you can still experience pain, you should be protected from pain. I, I have a that, question. You accidentally give it value? No. Aren't you Why would you give it value? Because Why would you give it value? In fact, it's negative value. In, order to... in fact, it's negative value because you're you're making me instead of instead of contributing, you're making me have to protect you. So you're actually negative value. But in order in order to think that something is worth protecting, it must have value. No, I just don't want you to exp- You have negative value. Because you're contributing nothing, and I have to save your ass, so you're taking value away from us. If it has like, no value. Why would you save its ass? Because I don't like pain. But you're, you're not the one feeling pain. I am. So from your fucking. The money is feeling pain. I'm feeling pain for your from your pain. From your someone pain. something that is completely worthless, valueless. Yeah. Your pain is just inherently makes me. In fact, that in fact that sh- shows to you how inconvenient your existence is. You're you have no <laughs> value, and you're actually giving me headache. So you actually have negative value. Your pain is giving me pain. So you have not only have zero value, you have negative. It has value. It, it, it's <laughs> value. It's, it's yes. Its value is the whole fact that you don't want it to feel pain. So therefore, you are trying to alleviate its pain. That's that right. It's an inconvenient. Value. Value is like you give something to me. What are you giving to me other other than okay? The only value you could give to me is if you die without pain and I get to eat you. Some other form of value that you could give is like maybe you're a mother bunny, and your little baby bunnies are feeling loved by you. That's another source of value. Okay, those are sources of value. But the fact that you're making me upset over your pain—that's not a value. That's an inconvenience. That's negative. That takes points away from your value. I don't. What you don't about, have value for me to want to protect you. But go ahead, sorry, sorry. I'm curious what you guys think about like how something, something's capacity to bring joy to other people, right, contributes to that value. The only source of value. That's a, that's the, my def, actually. That's good. I didn't know that was my definition of value until you just said it. <laughs> there's no other. There's no other source of value. The whole point of, I mean, the whole point, every any form of purpose that you could think for us is about bringing joy and reducing misery. There's no other way that you could reduce it to that, to reduce it to anything else. Like, um, that's what it all comes down to, right? So you have value to others as much as you could give them joy and or reduce their misery, which is technically the same thing, phrased in different ways. Um you know, but that's, yeah, that's what value means. So what's your definition of value? The capacity for something to bring joy and alleviate misery. Okay. So 
the re- according to dictionary.com, the definition <laughs> of it is the regard that something is held to deserve the importance, worth, or usefulness of something. So you could easily say, yeah, the, the capacity for something to provide for, with you for something mm-hmm. is part of the equation, but that's not the entirety of the equation. It's also talking about here about whether or not we feel like th- these things, these a bunny, for instance, has the re- has should have the ability to deserve not to feel pain. Deserve? Okay. Then you, I mean, that's a logical fallacy to refer to a dictionary, by the way. It's what is it called? Yeah, it is but, an appeal to dictionary, right? Oh really? Okay, that's how. I, I, I mean, not. I. I don't agree with all logical fallacies. I don't agree with the slippery slope logical fallacy. Okay. Well, I mean, we could. That's that's logical logical fallacy. Fallacy. No. Okay, but okay, so first of all, just because something is a logical fallacy, that doesn't mean it's wrong. Okay. Yeah. I, if you think everything is wrong because it's a logical fallacy, that's called a fallacy fallacy. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but. But but the thing is the thing is that I don't know like okay so deserve. When you use the word deserve, all of a sudden you're coming up with a definition that changes from person to person, okay? And mm-hmm. that definition, then if it's up to me, deserve like deserve has nothing to do with value, okay? But there, there's there's two different definitions that you come up with. One of them was about usefulness, the other one was about deserve. Deserving is a subjective thing, and everybody could come up with their own value judgment on that but when it comes to the usefulness i think that's a more objective consistent de- definition again you you could use different definition of values but if we want to make a point i think we could be consistent about which definition of value we're using and and if you're using a different definition then it becomes a semantic argument right mm-hmm. so if you want to okay so if we're talking about value as in usefulness and the capacity to give joy or alleviate misery then I think that's a very useful definition. But if you want to use a different definition, which is called deserving, then it's a very weird definition for value for me. But okay, then you're, then I guess you could be like bunnies have value just because we think they deserve to be protected. It's just so weird. Like, what, that's so inconsistent with how I look value at value. Like, like so basically, in that sense, a person that is a productive member of society and giving us all, um, you know, like let's say they came up with a vaccine that saved a gazillion people, okay? Uh, and somebody that just does nothing but play video games. Again, I'm not against video games, but let's say somebody just play video games nonstop every day, okay? And and contributes nothing to society. In fact, they also go shoplifting sometimes, right? To me, they these two people both deserve the same rights and equal treatment in the eyes of the law, no matter, right? But so based on your definition of value, these people have the same value, so that's a very shitty definition of value, I think. You think so? I think I would just say, like, they des- I think, I mean, but the, the point is that that's a semantic thing because we both agree that they should be treated equally. Mm. We both agree with that, like, equal opportunity equal, or rights. So, whatever semantics we use to come to that conclusion, we basically come to that same conclusion, anyways. Well, we'd reach what different conclusions it? on the topic of veganism. Well, that's okay. You want to open that can of worm? Because we no, can. Oh, there you go. Ideal meal. Yeah, go ahead, Vikram. So you go ahead first. So, Mike, I, I'm a bit curious about uh, guessing your definition of value. So, take on whether it's animals or like humans and stuff like that like what trait does a does an animal have that if a human being had that same trait you would be okay with us eating that human being I'm okay with human be eating human beings right now <laughs> well that's news wait I need to know more about this context I need to know more about when what? this would happen. <laughs> okay. I don't see other than disgust and health issues. 
if humans were to reach a certain age and they're about to die, why are we not chopping them up and putting them in cans and selling their meat? Like, why are we not doing that? I mean, it's disgusting. That's why we're not doing that. But if the disgust wasn't there, if it wasn't disgusting, emotionally, like, wouldn't it make us, like, go like you? Why would... <laughs> Why? Why wouldn't we do that? Like, oh, yeah, I think what Vikram is pointing to is more like, why wouldn't we round up human beings and put them in slaughterhouses and then package them at supermarkets? No, that's an that's, that's not an argument against veganism. That's an argument against treating animals badly in animal in farms, right? So, like, so basically, you're saying that if we treated animals humanely uh, and didn't, if they were, if they weren't being treated badly in farms and they had like good lives, then it would be okay to, uh, for us to kill them and eat them? Wait, I have a clarifying question. I... Wait. Okay, in, so then... in Armin's <laughs> scenario of eating humans, are you murdering humans to be eaten? Or do they happen to just die and during a certain period should yeah. their meat be healthy enough to consume? Should they already have died, you consume it? Or are they being murdered to be eaten? No, no, they're just either volunteering to, you know, die with that, die with dignity, like they. You That's know. a fetish, actually. Okay, but yeah. also, but also, just a few seconds after they died. Okay. That's an easy way wow. out of the question, though. That's obviously not what Bikram was asking. Yeah, but it was not at all what I asked. Like. I just well, needed to know. <laughs> okay, but what's the? But that was a different question. So, what's the question? Uh, so, what trait? does an animal have that if a, if a human being had that same trait you would be able to eat that human being but i just said i'm able to eat human beings right now <laughs> like, <laughs> given the same context of, uh, <laughs> as if they were being abused by animals so why is it that you don't care about animals being eaten being oh. killed to be eaten, even self-awareness you... self-awareness Self-awareness. So, okay. if a human being didn't have the ability to have self-awareness, oh, would it yeah. be okay to eat it? No, but, okay, so he's actually good. good question. Self-awareness plus uh, the emotional trauma to other humans from eating humans. Like, for example, if you eat cows, right, the other, like, and kill them humanely, the other cows are not going through a, like a psychological trauma and thinking like, why are we here? What is our purpose in life? Why are we being raised to just be food? Why are like they just killed my grandpa and ate it? Holy shit! I can't recover from this. This is psychologically traumatic to me. Cows are not going through that. Okay, they're just like, I just want to fuck, eat, shit, piss, take care of my baby. That's all I care about, right? Um, so, so, because, but, but because if you eat my grandpa, I'm gonna be like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> right? A severely <laughs> mentally disabled person yeah. what? out in the woods. A severely mentally disabled person who <laughs> is so disabled that they don't have self awareness. They basically just fit the description that you gave. Would okay. you have any qualms about that person being sent into the slaughterhouse to to be eaten? Oh well, Jesus. <laughs> Okay, so the problem with that is you have to remove a few factors for this to be okay. You haven't removed all the factors. First of all, as family, no one cares about it. No, yeah. people are still going to be grossed out by the fact that I ate a human. I ate a homeless. No, person. but we did it be okay eat, for you to eat. No, they, would, they, they wouldn't be icky. They would be shocked. They're like, Armin just went in the woods and ate a human. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> they're like, you're like, what the fuck is wrong with that? Like, the psychological trauma to the humans is way beyond for some reason uh way beyond no would be you what the only person in, in this scenario the only person that would know about it would be you and the one person who wants to eat that guy what about the the this the disgust that is wired inside my brain for for about eating other humans Am I, I mean part of moral progress is getting rid of the ick factor in moral situations don't you think mm -hmm. Yeah, but I do have the egg factor. Like, it's wired in my brain. Like, it's like mm -hmm. the same as, like, I mean, do you like. You more so consistent. No, that's bull fuck bullshit. Like, you can't just uh, remove my egg factor because, like, that's part of the. Morally consistent means, like, you should ignore your feelings. That's bullshit. So basically, you could say, like, 
okay, our men, you're straight, but logically, women and men are equal in every way. So why not go fuck a man? Uh, like, well, a better example would be like you have the ick factor in twenty. <laughs> Try it out. <laughs> What? I mean, I can't remove the ache factor. You're like, oh, but there's no, you have to be morally consistent. There's nothing different. You know, these people are the same value. And I'm like, I just grosses me out. Like, what do you want me to do? I just don't like it. Well, what do you have to, what, what I can't. So, okay, so you want to, okay, here, I'll, I'll, I'll fix it. I'll use the ache factor. I, I'll fix it for you, okay? Let's say there's no judgment from society, okay? This person is not self aware. Nobody's gonna miss this person. I have no ick factor from eating a human, okay? And there's no health issues from eating a human. Then okay, fine. I'm having a barbecue, but I'm, I'm also have to be there. <laughs> yeah, I feel like most people on Earth wouldn't have those standards. Like, no, what are you talking um... about? People have those standards because of that ick factor. But in this scenario, we're ex we're assuming that we remove the ick factor somehow, magically somehow. Then of like, course, I'm why not? Said that if most people saw what, like the meat they are eating, what it had to go through, most people would go vegan. It's just that yeah. like when we eat, we separate what we see on our plate with the actual animal who had to well, suffer I mean, for all these months. You can say the same thing about a heart surgery and a childbirth. You don't eat a child's heart, right? No, but. No, you just, I'm saying I've seen a heart surgery. Okay, I've been in a, in a surgery room. I mean, it's not a lot of people are going to be like, that's disgusting, but it was a very good thing that it happened, right? A child, it's a child right? more disgusting. It's good for the child, but you're like, no, I'm just saying it's because like, the process of something is disgusting. That's why they don't show the mother of a child that is going through a heart surgery, like, hey, come look, look at the heart surgery, like, you just like. I don't want to see it. I just want the pro results. Okay, the results is good for me, right? So you can make like, oh, it's disgusting. Oh, right, well, I don't want to see it. Then just give me, give me the fucking burger, <laughs> right? So <laughs> I don't want to see the process. Well, okay, yeah, the the process is disgusting. So why should I see it? Like, <laughs> oh. it's like on one side you're carrying something that's uh, that might be disgusting. The mm -hmm. process might be disgusting, but it's it's leading to the to the child feeling better in the long run. Yeah. While with an animal, you're it's killing the animal. It's a burger, burger in my tummy. Right. Yeah. So the, yeah. So, so the result end result is also very good. The process might be disgusting. Here's what you guys are missing. You yeah, have. I'm trying to. I'm trying to see. Uh, I can't. I can't pinpoint the exactly the name of a fallacy that you're committing. But if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. you're shifting the goalpost. I'm not. I have to check. I have to check its right name. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure. Right how am I shifting your goalpost? I'm being very consistent. I'm just, okay. The the point that you guys okay. The whole animal rights should be about. This is why everybody is missing the point about what activism for animals should be. It, and and I think if we had focused all animal rights activism on this, a lot more animals would be right now saved. Okay, it should have the focus should have been on removing the reducing the mistreatment of animals before their slaughter and killing them in humane ways. Okay, bigger like and this is if and again this would have been so popular. Okay. This is the whole vegan thing. I think as uh, movement has been very bad for animals, right? Mm -hmm. I think animal rights activism. A lot of people have washed their hands off of animal rights because the whole movement has been about stop eating meat. And good luck with that, okay? But I if mean, it was, about, I mean, think about how the movement would have been so much successful. Like these big corporations that you already all hate and would take every opportunity to be against. They're mistreating these animals. Look at the cages. Look at the way they're treating them. Let's go lobby the government to put tougher regulations on big corporations to treat the animals better. People are like, yeah, I, I'll be on that. Like, don't vote for this person, politician, because she's. You know, like or McDonald's, let's petition McDonald's to not buy meat from farms that are mistreating the animals. You know how many people would get behind that? But right now it's hard to get people on the side like to care about animal rights because they're just so scared that oh you're gonna you're gonna call me evil because I eat I eat chicken. 
So people are like, okay, animal rights, I'm running the other way, right? I just think that so many animals would have had so much more. Again, and, and it, here's just like when it comes to uh, environmental issues, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to walk instead of like taking a cab. Like, you know, uh, I'm going to, you know, recycle, which is all fine. But these things don't move the needle as much as you could have. Like, if you spend the time that you would have saved taking a car instead of a bike to actually do something to lobby the government to put more regulations on, you know, carbon tax or all these giant ships that are responsible for most of the, uh, you know, carbon emissions and stuff like that. I think you would have moved the needle, like per changing personal habits just make, doesn't really move the needle as much as you could have done if you actually done activism and get the right policies uh, passed. That's what I mean. and so uh, you said originally I, that you were... Oh, right. Go ahead, Vikram. Uh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that I'm not really sure if you're correct on that because based on what I've seen, veganism is at its most popular right now. Like A lot more people are going vegan and there are a lot more vegan options like Beyond Meat, Impossible Burgers and stuff like that which five years ago did not exist. And when it comes to like things like McDonald's, there are plenty of campaigns against how McDonald's treats, uh, how they handle the processes inside. And when it comes to animal rights activism, like, I mean, I'm not an activist, so I can't really comment on it. But the reason I don't eat meat anymore, I don't drink dairy, I don't, I avoid eggs and all that stuff. It's just because it's out of empathy. Like when I look, at a cow, a pig, a rabbit, a dog, and all that, and all these animals, I realized that the only difference in the end between me and them is that I am a human being and they are not. And I don't think that. that Wait, you're making so many things that I'm not I'm, I need to yeah. respond to all of them. Okay, so first of all, yeah. The, the only reason why I'm not eating them is because, you know, they're not human beings. I mean, yeah, I care more, more about human beings than other animals. Mm -hmm. That I'm wired to think like that. Like, call me species. I'm a species. I'm, a, I'm okay. I care about animals, but I care about humans more than animals, and I can't help it. It's just wired in my brain. The same way I care about my wife more than most other humans. Okay. Uh, the same care about the same way I care about my family more more about other humans. It's just it's just this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe you might be like, oh, it's mo not morally consistent. What are you talking about? It's, it's, it's like, is there any... Why should... I like green more than red. Like, but they're just both colors. Yeah. Like, why would one be more valuable than the other one? I, they're not. It's just, I just like one of no, them more than... not a moral dilemma. No, 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 no. I'm not going to let you get off on that one. That's not a moral dilemma. When I said that what, what you should be morally consistent with your values, and I also said that part of moral progress is getting rid of the it factor, and, and, I, and I even said there, there was yeah. probably an it factor that people had. Yes, you absolutely can. People definitely had an it factor during the times of slavery, for sure. People got rid of that it factor, and moral progress was made. The same thing can be said for veganism. You may have an it factor, but we can transcend that it factor because we're a species that can rationalize. Don't you think that's true? No, I don't think so. I think that there's so some... Think we can our way out of ick factors, but there no, are instances in some of them you can, instant. some of them you can, some of them you can, some of them you can't. Okay. And the fact yeah. that there are millions of vegans out there shows that we can get rid of this ick factor. No, but there are some ick factors you can get rid of. Some of them you can't. You, there's no way, you, like you can't. How, do you think you could turn me gay? Do you think you could turn that gay? That is. Straight? That's an ick factor right there. Can you get rid of that? Yeah, I don't that's... think you get Vincent's Veganism point. Veganism biological? My point is that there's some ache factors you can't get rid of. The fact that, I, the, fact that the mother likes... And I'm the... saying it's one that you can get rid of. Well, how do you know that? I'm just saying, I think being us being a species... Okay, here's the reason why I don't think this is something you can get rid of. Because it's like every other species, other, other than dogs, I think, are species just like us. But... This is such a big part of our biology. I mean, think about it. Even when we care about animals, we care. It seems like emotionally we're more attracted to the ones that are cute than the ones that are not. Mm -hmm. Right. Why is that? Because we're looking at human features It's wired in our brain. We're looking at human features. We care about humans. Right. Nobody like this is why it's a problem. Like sharks are in bigger trouble than whales and dolphins 
But dolphins and whales are cuter than sharks, so people don't care about sharks as much. Even though sharks are bigger, right now need more help. Because, again, we're looking at things that we consider cute. It's wired in your brain. You can't get rid of that, okay? Um, and again, I, it's, uh, I think it's a mistake to... Re- people think, like, we're robots, okay? If you want to encourage empathy and sympathy and all that, you cannot ignore biolo- emotions that are biological, Okay. You cannot ignore it. It's like, you know, that, that moral dilemma that people say, like, okay, you care about a girl that is r- drowning right in front of you more than a thousand people that are dying somewhere else, okay? People are like, oh, you have to be more co- morally consistent. You have to care about that thousand person somewhere else more. Well, you can't, okay? You can't, and by force, by trying to, because you see somebody in front of you, your emotion, the proximity makes you care more about it more, okay? You want to act like a robot, you want to act like a computer, you're going to force people like, no, you have to care. Think about how exhausting that is, to all of a sudden care about the thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that are suffering everywhere. Do you think anybody has that, that much emotional capacity to all of a sudden care about a thousand people as if they were all dying right now in front of them? They're not going to have... So what are you going to do by trying to force people or to try to... Not force, but push people to be morally consistent? You're going to... Emotion- no, hold on, let me finish. What you're going to do instead is you're going to exhaust them trying and they're going to say, fuck it, to be to be consistent, I'm not going to care about that thousand person. I'm not going to care about this one girl that is dying in front of me either. Instead of trying to, instead of like encouraging that being consistent with a thousand people somewhere else, we encourage more of that one, okay? More if more people cared about one person, only one person, and did something about that one person, instead of not giving a shit about anything, we would like just do that, you know, you would be fine, right? You you the world would be a lot better. Like if you just go from not caring to care about fucking anything, if you could get people to just do that, then you you're making a lot of progress. If you were like, no, you have to be everything has to be calculated and this, how could you do you know, how could you care about this? Well, I'm a fucking human and my brain is not an algorithm, and I just don't think like that, and I don't feel like that. If you want to encourage better play, a better play, a better world, you have to work within the brain that we are given, and you have to see what works, what works, what what messages will resonate and what will make people care, okay? If you, t- you seem yeah. to be denying. Okay, okay. I'll let no, you finish. One last thing. I'm just looking at pictures of burgers right now. <laughs> <laughs> but he, the thing is that, okay, so yes, vegans are growing, okay? But I'm talking about. No one is denying that vegans are growing more than ever before. But again, that number is much less than the number of people that you could have reached if more of these vegans were like, hey, go vegan if you want. But hey, if you also like. If you also want to fight for, let's say we cannot unite on, like you're a meat eater, I'm a vegan, and we're not going to work together on this, but can we work with each other on removing, you know, making the conditions better for animals? Can we work with each other on that? And uh, some vegan, to be fair, some vegans say, yes, okay, we can. But a lot of vegans are like, fuck no. Either you don't eat meat or fuck you, right? I'm not saying all vegans are saying that. I'm just saying that, and I agree with, Vikram, that there are some animal rights activism that are focusing on uh, making better conditions, but I'm just saying this all or none attitude for a lot of vegans have lost a lot of allies. I'm not saying uh, you're you're giving me examples of people that have done that kind of activism. I didn't say that kind of activism has never been done. I'm just saying a lot of potential allies to make better conditions for animals have been alienated because of this all or none attitude. Okay, so on the first thing that you mentioned originally, where you you talked about this the psychological experiment that people have, where if you care more about the little girl drowning in the in the lake next to you than you do about a thousand people suffering. Yes, that's perfectly true, and I'm not saying that you're going to immediately at the snap of your fingers get rid of those emotions. Those emotions are built into us from millions of years of evolution for empath for empathic reasons. I'm not denying that. What I'm denying is that we don't have the capacity to be able to rationalize our way out of that out of what out of, like we, we can change our reactions towards those types of situations yeah. can't we yeah we can exactly and so we can change our reactions to the ick factor that we get from not wanting to eat meats and onto your second point that uh, you you mentioned recently oh, yeah go, go ahead 
So okay, don't forget what you're gonna say. Here's what I, here's what I here's what I say we can do when it comes to being more consistent, more really consistent. We could do that better from a top-down approach rather than a bottom-up approach, right? For example, here's here's an example I give, right? Let's say you're a mother who ISIS. Are you here? Okay. Uh, who ISIS killed your child? Okay. Um, and now we get an ISIS member, just an ISIS member, we, not the same ISIS member that killed your child. But I'm going to advocate for don't just kill them, uh, you know, don't execute them, court, hearing, due process, all of that. Okay. Um, but the mother is like, what the fuck are you talking about? These motherfuckers killed my child. Do you think they had a court for him? Do you think, you know, they burn him alive, burn them alive right now. Why? Like, oh, my God, we're hiring a lawyer now to defend this ISIS member. What the fuck is wrong with you? These people are animals. They have no rights. And uh, do you think I'm going to be not understanding why a mother of somebody that was killed by ISIS would say stuff like this? I'm going to be, of course, I mean, I'm not going to be like, no, fuck you. We do process and all that. Like, why would you say that? Do you not understand the values? That means, you know, you want to become, you know, you want to abandon all the things that make us better to become more like those animals, like more like ISIS. This is how they win. This is by uh, the, the, the terrorists win by making us abandon our values, not just by their act of terrorism. You would think I'm going to give a speech like that to a mother. Like, no, I'm like, it's, she, she lost her fucking son. Of course, you're going to feel like that. OK, of course, you're going to feel like that. You want these people to be tortured for hours and hours in front of you and i will understand that if you want to feel like that okay but i expect that from a mother i wouldn't expect that from the fucking government okay from a government i would like okay this mom, mother wants these things and understandable but let's be serious here these are the values that make the country a better place and these are the policies that make the country a better place and i think we, we could be morally consistent and calculated when it comes to uh you know, government, you know, when it comes to policies, right? And, you know, when it comes to coming up with a social structure, with the government policies and stuff like that. So I think the expectations that you have from humans, I think those kind of expectations I expect from like an organized body and a structure and a government and policymakers and stuff like that. I do not think these, uh, I do not expect that from people, okay? You're and I, even if you can, if you can, very grim view of human nature because I mean people like Stephen Pinker, Paul Bloom, Jonathan Haidt would disagree with you on this one particular case. Oh wow, you you re okay? Appeal authority. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to do that. No, 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 no. Appeal to authority. This is this is you. This is the problem with people that only hang out with intellectuals. They overestimate human capacity. <laughs> they overestimate how humans think and operate. Because they don't hang enough with dumb people, and they well, underestimate—they under not just dumb people. They underestimate how most people think and how most people mm -hmm. operate, right? Uh, oh because man, like I had a question, like just to bring it back, like more towards you. Like, what would you need to see before you would go vegan? Like, what evidence you've shown to you would convince you to go vegan? Self-awareness. And no. so self-awareness in animals that we eat and also psychological trauma to the mere knowledge of other animals by the fact that the other animals are being eaten. Well, like animals for, no, no, here's here's for example, here's what I think should be a crime. Like for example, when a cow mother cow is separated from her child, there is psychological trauma there. Okay. A mother cow, when you take take her baby away from her. They both are experiencing trauma. That should be illegal, okay? But a mother cow doesn't really give a shit about the other cows next to her. If you take them away and they're missing one day, unless, you know, she's not going to be like wondering what the hell happened to that to Joe. Is he okay? Like, is he, did they eat him? Is he alive? I'm not going to wonder about those things, okay? So that's not... You know, so those two things will, will make me change my mind. If you could show so, that psychological trauma happening among all these cows because they're seeing like what 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 happened, like they're like demanding to know what happened to the other cows that were missing, and if they find out that they were killed, they're gonna get like like they're gonna get like depressed or something. 
or if they're just thinking like if you show me the cows are like what are what are my dreams for the future who am i really in this world what is my purpose am i just meant to eat and fuck and then become someone's dinner is that a sad existence if you could show me the cows are thinking like that and this is something that is important to them then i'm going to be like okay we shouldn't we shouldn't eat cows but how could we show you that like because unless the animal comes up to you and tells you like in english that hey i feel okay. this way well, like, look at, what well, exactly there's would you need to there's create? a lot of studies on that show okay this is getting very technical which is but you could go look at the research on what goes behind determining self-awareness I'm looking like, at the research right now, and it seems like the consensus is that cows feel sadness, grief, PTSD, oh, even joy and happiness. Oh, my God. You, you, you're not listening to what I'm saying. Of course cows feel that. Do you think I don't think cows feel depressed and sad and happiness? Of course they do. Do you think Isn't a cow is not... I'm talking about self-awareness. Do you think a cow is not happy when they're fucking another cow? Of course they're happy. <laughs> do you think Wait, a cow is not... Do you think a cow, when you put like a hot rod next in their butt, do you think they're not feeling pain and sadness and misery? Of course they are. That's why you shouldn't do those things to them. I'm talking about self-awareness, okay? Here's the thing. It's not a crime to take away something from somebody that they never even appreciated having, okay? A cow appreciates not being in pain, okay? So if you put a cow in pain, then that should be a crime. It should be illegal. You shouldn't be able to torture cows, Okay. But a cow has no appreciation or a, a understanding of it existing, okay? A cat doesn't know that either. A chimpanzee does, an elephant does, a dolphin does, a crow does, humans do, but a cow or a cat doesn't. A cat, for example, knows that other cats exist. A cat knows that its tail exists. It does, a cat knows that milk exists. Um, but it doesn't any, have any understanding of me. It has no perception of I as an entity. Okay, the a concept of I and me is foreign to them. So taking away something from them that they never even knew that was was there is you're not taking anything away from them. They did, you know. You could argue. Here's how you could argue: If you kill a cow, you're not taking their life was not something they were appreciating. Okay. So that's, you didn't take away their life, something that they knew they had. So that's not a crime. But you could argue that you took away potential pleasure in the future, right? So let's say a cow had two more years to live, fucking eat, and you, took, you, know, and you killed them. So you took two years of pleasure away from them. That, you could argue that, but what, you do, but what that's missing is that they wouldn't even be there to begin with if, the, if it wasn't for the meat industry, right? So... If you had asked, so a lot of vegans just assume, like you, Vikram is saying, like you can't, you can't talk to a cow. So, but what, I'll, t I'll tell you back on that. You can't talk to a cow either. So Wait, if you, no, 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 I hold on, hold on. If I'm you ask me, if you ask me. me, if you ask me, Armin, choose between these two options. Either you never exist, you're never born. Okay, option one. Option two, you're born, you have delicious grass. You get to fuck sometimes, you walk around sometimes, you enjoy the sunshine, drink water, and you become someone's dinner by age, I don't know what, 30 in human years, okay? Um, which one of these two options do you pick? I would like, I'll go with option two, okay? So a lot of these, if that's my choice. I'm not saying that's the cow's choice, but you guys are assuming that would not be the cow's choice. But a lot of these... If, if you have good conditions for the cows, a lot of these cows owe option two rather than option one because of the meat industry. And if you take the meat industry away, they will be stuck with option one of never existing. And you can tell me that you know that that's the option that they would have picked if they had the capacity of choosing. So maybe we should eat more meat so that more cows can actually experience life. Uh, just earlier, I asked you what would you need to see before you would go vegan? And you you brought up psychological trauma, but then Vincent sh gave showed you examples like evidence of oh, cows said, experiencing psychological I, trauma, I, and you switched to self awareness. I I was specific. I was very specific. Okay, I said psychological trauma from 
Did I just say, like, you have to show me that they experience psychological trauma? Do you think I don't know that animals can experience psychological trauma? I said psychological trauma from knowing that, thinking about, hey, what happened to the other cows here that are missing? What was happening to them? Are they being eaten? This is emotionally devastating to me. That is a psychological trauma. Yes, cow. Okay, here's the thing. If you take a hot rod and start go poking cows with it, they're going to experience psychological trauma from that. That's why you shouldn't not go and poke cows with hot rods. That because that will give them psychological trauma. But cows are not going to experience psychological trauma from noticing other cows missing around them and not knowing what's happening to them. That's not a psychological trauma that they're, ex they're going to experience from that. And that's why that's not, that shouldn't be a crime. You should just try to avoid pain from cows because that's what, they gonna, that's what they appreciate. They appreciate not being in pain. They don't appreciate being alive. They don't appreciate it. They don't even know that they're alive. Okay? So you're not stealing anything away from them. Do you care that they're being treated unfairly? That's just a quick yes or no question. Well, I'm not going to give you a yes or no, because what do you mean oh, unfairly? Okay. Oh, okay, okay, uh, okay. So, because originally in the podcast, you said uh, that what vegans should have done from the beginning is instead of saying, don't eat meats, don't eat animals, instead they should have been saying, look at the awful conditions that they have, that they're going through. Oh, they, could still, they could still say that we should no, eat. Right. But do you, care, uh, do you care that they're being treated um Awfully in poor conditions. Yes, that's what but, I care about more than the fact that they're being eaten. Why do you care if they don't have any self awareness? Well, because they could, because they, you don't need self awareness to be miserable about being in pain. So why don't you just go vegan and, and advocate for not having these cows murdered and slaughtered and being taken away from their children? You're missing the point. You're missing the point about what needs to be avoided. And by missing the point of what needs to be avoided, you're shifting the discussion to an unhelpful direction. I think that this, by, by missing the point of what the crime is, where, you know, by missing, here's the thing with morality for me, okay? I think this is why I also do a lot of, like, uh, hypotheticals, right? Like, for example, when I say, what's wrong with incest? Because to me, we have to exercise finding the harm, okay? Find the harm, avoid the harm. And every time you move away from, find, like, that's the play of the game, the, the name of the game. Find the harm, avoid the harm. Find the harm, avoid the harm. And every time you encourage any other standards for morality, you're not, not only you're not doing good, you're doing harm because you're practicing a wrong a thing, a wrong definition of morality. Okay? I think this is why I also try to find things that are taboo. Like, for example, when I say, okay, let's say incest, for example. Let's say they cannot have children. For example... Two sisters or two brothers, okay? Because people are like, oh, incest is bad because of the children, right? The reason, like, okay, what, what's the harm in two sisters having sex? I'm like, okay, like agency, like, okay, but this, um, this exercise of thinking about this is training you to, instead of looking for disgust or principles or all that fucking bullshit, to f look for consequences. And the consequence that we're looking here is harm. And that exercise makes, you, makes us more trained about if more people's morality was based on avoiding the harm, then there would be less harm. Isn't that obvious? If more people's moral standards were based on avoiding harm rather than principles and disgust, there would be less harm in the world. Right? So that's what I advocate. Find the harm, try to avoid the harm. If you think about, if you're like, oh, no, there's no way, no, I'm, even if you kill them humanely, I'm against, I'm against killing animals and uh, in general, by principle, because... Because consistency with humans, okay? So your moral standard is not based on find the harm, avoid the harm. And that's not, that's not a good thing for me to promote. I'm not going to promote that. Because that's going to be make more, less people exercise, you know, the, you know, find, you know practicing on uh, learning how to f uh, find the harm. Do you, do you know what I mean? Would you, here's a question for you. If you... If I raise the bunny, okay? okay? If I made a bunny, cloned a bunny, okay? This bunny would not ever exist ever if it wasn't for me, okay? And I gave this bunny a life that most humans could even could not even dream of, okay? Best food that bunnies would ever enjoy. Massages every day. 
I don't know, the bunnies like music, classical music, the most attractive other bunnies for them to fuck. Um, a full it's film, bunny a, paradise. Paradise, okay? Just perfect. Like, in everything, like the most ideal conditions, okay? Temperature, everything, like, whatever is pleasing to their eye. And then, at a certain time, I'm like, kill the bunny with no stress no stress at all okay like it doesn't even see it coming no pain ever uh, and then i killed the bunny cut it up cooked it in a very delicious way and offered it to you would you why would you not eat that bunny why not it smells really good the... you I'll would let vincent go first right? I'd eat the bunny, but the argument here, I, that's a completely different argument because that's not what that's not what's occurring in veganism worlds. Okay, so if you agree that there's nothing wrong with eating that bunny, then we should... This bunny would have never existed, right? Yes. So my point is that that's what we should focus on to get <laughs> more farms to that condition, to conditions where animals are not suffering. And if you say like, hey, well, what, what... But if we just eat, stop eating animals, less animals will be in farm and stuff like that. But the thing is that you're losing people. That's not the case. That would only be true if you didn't notice the PR nightmare that that would create. You're losing a lot of potential allies by focusing on the wrong goal. The goal should mm -hmm. not should not not have been like, oh, that's just not eating meat. Because based on what your answer was right here. There's nothing wrong with eating meat if you do it in a humane way. So if you were more consistent with the messaging that we put out there, hey, like, let's just get these fucking farms more humane, then a lot of people are like, yeah, I can get behind that. Even if the second message will lead to less animals being in harm's way because less animals, eating less animals, less animals being in farms, okay? The messaging of the second message will get you more allies. Okay, okay, I get where you're coming. You, I think I misunderstood your original question. Uh, do you I'll, I'll let you go eat over. animal from factory farms? What? Do you eat animal from a regular factory farming? Like the animals that you yourself eat? No. Are they treated the way that you just brought up? Um, well, I mean, I eat fish and chicken. And the chicken that I eat here is mostly not... I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Should you not be looking into that? Because if you, because you brought up how like rather no, no, than no. fight for like animals not no. to be killed, we should fight for them to be treated better before they are killed. So why, not, yeah, why not yourself be the leading example? Lead us all by that's you bullshit. yourself being the I first guess, to I'm, find better animals, like animals bullshit. better treated. You know, that's I bullshit. mean, you yourself. That's your conditions, right? So why what, not? What, stick what's by that girl? Name? What's that girl's um the girl? Greta, what's her last name? Greta Thunberg. Right. If she has to take a private jet, for example, to not miss a very important climate conference that will ch make, I'm not comparing myself. I'm not that important. Like I'm not saying that I'm important. I'm just, I'm just giving you an extreme example to make a point. Okay. Let's say Greta is, if she is at this conference, is going to make a huge difference. Again, I know a lot of people think she's not a good activist. Let's say, assume Greta is a great climate activist and she, like, she makes a difference. Okay? Just, just please, like, people who are listening to this and hate, like, hate what she stands for, just let's assume that she's a great climate activist. Okay? But if, let's say, her presence as a conference is going to make a huge difference in policies, in more current, in funding, in more countries listening to it. But to make it to this conference, she has to take a private jet. Okay? i like, fuck it, take your private jet. That's just one goddamn private jet. Like, I don't give a shit that our principal is like bullshit. Like, yeah, what the fuck is that? But like, that's going to make Greta has no choice to get to that place but to take the private jet. While you, if you don't have those animals, you can always just be vegan yeah. till someday yeah. when the I'm animal is productive. I'm more productive and healthy when I'm not vegan. And, and I if think that I also sort of debunks really quick i think that also sort of debunks your original thought experiment that you gave to me because i misunderstood your question i thought there would there would have been no choice but i would have, I would have, yeah i would have easily said no the bunny doesn't need to die it doesn't matter i would say people have a choice in this situation so that's why i i don't think your argument stands i don't understand what do you say because when you originally asked me 
it's the, uh, this scenario with the bunny, right? Um, and I said, well, no, because I, I misunderstood your question. But I think instead of what I would have said is, well, why can't we just strive to make sure that the bunny doesn't even die in the first place? Why does the bunny need to die just so I could have a delicious meal? I have other options. I have I can easily go vegan and still get the the same nutrients that I would if I were to, just... to The bunny doesn't have to die, but I really just want a bunny. I just want to taste the bunny. And there's nothing wrong with like if I kill it in a humane way, there's nothing being reduced from the bunny. What's well, I mean, wrong? It's... Its potential future life is being reduced. It's taken away. Yeah, but what if I raise it only to eat it? So it wouldn't even have the life to begin with if I didn't want to eat it. If I didn't I want mean, to, I was, yeah. I mean, I would still argue that you should the the bunny should still be able to live. You have the opportunity not to eat it. You have the opportunity to eat other things. But there's no I, reason why the bunny needs to I, suffer. Yeah, we don't. It doesn't need to. But there's not. There's no reason also why not to kill it. Well the, well, the only reason why you want to eat it is because you want to have a delicious, nice meal. Yeah, that's the reason enough. That's good enough. And I, and, and I would make the argument that that reason is not good enough to overvalue, to, to be valued more than the bunny's life. But then it just goes back to what well, you originally bunny, said. You know, the bunny, the bunny has even, a value. No, no, bunny, bunny wouldn't even have a life if I didn't want to eat it. I only raise it because I want to eat it. But that's, so, okay, that's not what's going on my, right now in the no, that's exactly what's going on. Do you think the factory farms would have raised chickens because, like, if there was nobody eating them, the only reason why they even have a life is because people want to eat them. They wouldn't and exist. They wouldn't exist. Yeah, that's they a eat. huge problem, like, because the amount of animals that are, I guess, created in the animal industry is so huge. Well, and it's not, it doesn't help to contribute to the ecosystem. So if we were to free the animals, a lot of them would die. But in the long run, it would become at a more at a healthier rate. But I, I have like a, a let me give you an example. Let me, you. Let me, hold on, let me give you an example. I just want to complete uh, this point first. Uh, okay. Mike, earlier, yeah, like if I could, like if let's say we were to introduce you to like very specific plant-based nutritionist who could create like a very healthy, like fitted to your needs, like diet that had no animals, no dairy, right? no eggs. Would you go vegan? Same price? Yeah. Or cheaper, same price. Yeah. I would not, yeah. I mean, I would flip a coin. It makes no difference to me. You're saying oh, something? Really? You're saying it tastes exactly the same? No, I'm not saying it will taste exactly the same. It's just like if we could give you all the nutrients you need, like all the diets planned by a nutritionist, like everything planned for you, all you have to do is not eat meat. No dairy, no eggs, about, none of that what, stuff. What, it would ta what about taste? I mean, you're eating new things. It's, I mean, it's up to you. I cannot tell you if you will enjoy it. But let's say you enjoy the taste. Let's say you really you love the taste. I mean, why, 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 yeah, why not? I'll flip a coin. Well, you should look up this website called Challenge 22, where they, they will introduce you to nutritionists and everything is free of charge. They'll help you. They'll give you like okay. a Get, get, on get, how no, to eat that's fine. That's great. Send me a nutritionist to manage my food for free. I would love that. <laughs> yeah, go, <laughs> look up the website challenge no, no. no, no. You send. They would send. They would give me a free nutritionist. Like I would take that. Whatever. That that, whatever. That, yeah. Whatever. I mean, I don't give a shit if they're pro providing me with great vegan option. I don't, whatever option. If you give me a free <laughs> expert on anything. That I that is like why but like will you go vegan then? Will you like will, if we made it really easy for you? Will you go vegan? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, you're giving me free nutritionist. It seems like better than what I have right now. <laughs> but it seems he's he to go vegan, but the fact that the animals are feeling pain that doesn't matter. Like in in his in, you're not in your listen, you're not listen, no 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 listen to what no, no, I just no, I I know, I know, but that's what I'm Pain like. Pain matters to me. Death uh -huh. does not matter to me. When it comes to animals, well, I mean, some animals it matters to me. Like chimpanzees, whales, oh. dolphins, elephants, and crows, death matters to me. But for most animals, pain matters to me. Death does not matter to me. Okay. Their pain does not matter enough. Not just pain. Sad, even sadness. Even depression. Even loneliness. All of that matters to me when it comes to animals. 
Okay. In fact, for some animals, it matters more to me than humans. Be, uh, apparently, because apparently they can feel more pain, like if pigs. That's, if that's true, why are you why are you consuming from the current animal industry? Because again, I told you that uh, individual behavior does not move the needle compared to actual policies. Here's but for example. Why are like, you like? Why are you like? Even then, even if it's not going to change the world, at least you're doing your part, right? My part, I do more of my part if I didn't have to yeah, worry about those things. I, yeah, I do more of my part if I told people why they should care about pain rather than death. Mm. And it would be more consistent with my messaging if I, if I ate more meat, actually, that way. Here's the thing. Why not do both? Why not avoid eating it's not consistent animal with products more, and it's, tell it's not people consistent, about pain? It's not consistent with what I'm saying, though. Here's, here, let me give you an example, right? Let's say that you're an activist, right? Gary, and your main source of activism is YouTube, okay? And then you tell yourself, okay, I'm lacking motivation, okay? And what you, what, what's your activism? Your activism is about uh, helping the poor, okay? Let's say you're fundraising for um, digging wells in Darfur, something like that, okay? Um, and you're like, you know what? If I just had 100,000 subscribers, I would be able to do a lot more, right? I would be able to do a lot more fundraising. My God, this would be amazing. And let's say you're right, okay? You would be a lot more. But you're not being motivated. You're so disappointed with your performance so far. And then you say like, okay, if I hit 50,000 subscribers, I'm going to buy myself a Rolex. That's my motivation, okay? I'm just going to buy myself a Rolex if I hit 50,000 subscribers, okay? And <laughs> like, and let's say that motivation all of a sudden makes you perform better, act, you know, get up every morning, like make better content, and then you not you not only you pass your um, subscriber count by way more than you thought and you hit your goal and you buy yourself a Rolex. You're like, dude, if you're thinking about the poor, why don't you just put, use that Rolex money to donate to poor people. Like, why are you buying yourself a Rolex? Isn't that more helpful to people, like, in the or something like that? What the fuck? Isn't that the whole point of what you're doing? Like, yeah, but I'm an, I'm, I'm not, like, a robot that, like, here's the, here's the goal, here's how you get there, follow. I'm an emotional fucking creature. I need to hack my brain to perform better emotionally. I need to reward myself. I need to somehow make the stress seem less. I need music to be able to work. I need like a better temperature. These things matter for me to be able to do the things that I do. I mean, I don't like, I don't, I, I would never get rewarded by a Rolex. I'm just coming up with an example. I don't understand why somebody would like um, an expensive watch, but that's their personal taste. That just motivates them. And now let's say they're helping a lot more poor people because of that motivation that they put out there, right? I'm just saying that for me, like, um, this would be the same thing, right? So if you could, I mean, that's not an ideal thing that you're ex telling me, like, oh my God, let's say like we hire nutritionists and they come and they give you, they go and do the shopping for you and they give you delicious vegan food that is nutritionally the same and it also doesn't cost you anything else. Hey, well, yeah, okay, fine. Give me a free nutritionist. That's not that, that's not the real world, okay? In the real world, I, it's very convenient for me to get my protein intake using chicken and egg. It's very lean. The, I get the most amount of protein for the least amount of calories. Uh, I, the, you know, the bone marrow is really good for my joints because I'm running. I need like creatine. I, like it's really. I mean, you can't really beat the fish that I'm eating. It, like I'm getting fish oil. That's very healthy. Um, you know, so these are, you can't really, the convenience is right there. It's dirt cheap where I am to get these food. Um, there is really inconvenient for me to all of a sudden try to replicate that in vegan style. But if you it's said really to, easy to get alternatives, but it, it, it's he not, can't get his protein shake during quarantine. He can't get it. <laughs> no, yeah, I, mean, I have my own, you know, I have my vegan protein shake. I just had it before coming here. No, it's not. No, but he can't get it shipped to where he is. He's suffering. <laughs> you don't know the struggles he's going. <laughs> Let me come with back eight, to eight, so, so, I mean, if you want to send me a team that does <laughs> that for me, that would make it very convenient. But I'm just saying that's not a very ideal scenario. Okay. Um, 
I mean, you, you can't you you can't just like mean, fish oil. Like, really, you know how much I, you know how much I missing out of. Fish oil? I have a plant based oil thing that's exactly the same to fish no, oil, it's, except it's, it's from okay. plants. Okay, you're not. Uh, yeah. Are, are, are you actually a practicing vegan? I'm curious. Who who are you talking to? You. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah, we're two okay. two vegans. Okay, wait, we, we Susanna hasn't talked for a while. Susanna, why are you a vegan? No. What? Um, because every time I've tried to even go vegetarian, I feel terrible. It's not good for my body and it's not good for my health. Mm. Um, because of my metabolism, I need a shit ton of protein. I'm like a hummingbird. Like, I'm like, like I need so much protein every day. And if I'm not eating heavy protein i feel sick and i don't have energy so vegans will tell you there's great sources of protein in vegan food i've tried and i feel terrible right me too if, yeah, if that were not the case for my health yeah when also, it comes to medical conditions i wouldn't conditions. talk about it i have some health conditions that require me to have extra amounts of iron like extra but if that extra. were not if that were not the case, though, would you go vegan? What is the moral? Like, do you have a moral argument against veganism? Against veganism? Um, well, for myself, I mean, just to expose myself, this is like the one thing I let myself be completely selfish about. <laughs> so you think it is morally righteous to be vegan than not to? Morally righteous. <laughs> I hate that word righteous. I just get so it is more ethical. How about that? I know. Um I know, I know. Uh <laughs> tough spot putting this this goes back to what Armin was saying at the very I beginning think... of this podcast. Do you think more of a person when he goes up to you and tells you I'm a vegan? No, I think less of them because I think they're virtually virtue signaling and going to make my life hella annoying. I've dated vegans. It's the worst. Um, <laughs> um, no, what if, okay, let me, let me fix that for you. What if you find that they're vegan without them telling you? Or you just ask them and then they tell you? I mean, that's fine. Good for them. No, it's not like, fine. It's not fine. Do you, like, I'm not just saying if it's fine or not. I'm saying, do you think more highly of them? For the main it, I mean, in practicality, I do not think more highly of them. If I was going to think about it in this grand ethical way, where all of these conditions of the basics of our human of pragmatics and what our lives are really like and who can actually attain this level of veganism and health conditions, if all that was wiped away, mm. I would probably think more highly of them. If mm. all of those, but there are so many confounding factors. There are so many confounding factors and just the pragmatics of daily life that I don't think about it that way. And yeah, it's so expensive where I live to be a vegan. It's extremely expensive. So right. really it's a luxury. Here, here too. Here it would be a lot more expensive for me to be vegan. Guys, you have I no mean, idea how well, you guys. It's not hard, but I'm in Vancouver, so like, yeah. I'm in the Philippines. You have no idea how fucking dirt cheap it's to get chicken and eggs here. It's like, <laughs> I get, like I, it's really, really cheap. But here's the other uh, thing. I have a question. Can I, I, can I answer the same question that Susanna just answered? Can I just ask a question on this, on what you what? just said? Let me just ask, answer. Okay, fine. You go ahead. Let Susanna speak. Wait. This is my drawing of you <laughs> eating that chicken. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 to be fair yeah, right? to clarify though i do think like one of the worst atrocities in the world right now is the way animals are like probably I mean, the most I will, also, I will also be intellectually honest enough to say that this is an issue that i honestly just don't care about that much mm. <laughs> there's stuff that i care about way more mm. This but, isn't one of them, so I don't occupy my time with it. I eat what I want because I'm skinny as fuck. I need the nutrition, and I feel shitty without it. Yeah, I, okay. That's that's what I would say. I feel shitty without meat. But here's the thing, uh, though. I do acknowledge that um, the great, the greatest atrocity that is happening right now in the world is the way animals are treated. 
both by humans and by other animals. <laughs> um, you know, in 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 factory farms. But also, I kind of, I kind of sometimes lose st- sleep about how animals are treated in nature, by by you know, like when I, I think how many gazelles are died today, and none of those die, none of those deaths must have been a pleasant one, like they either go starving to death, or somebody is eating them slowly, and you're like, oh well, that's nature, you know, yeah, it's nature, but it's fucking brutal, right? Like we imagine the amount of pain that is going right now. Among just the, all the birds and all, like, like we don't even hear about it. Like, how many rats are now right now suffering? Right? How many? How many? Ugh, Jesus. What like, do you guys think about people who do vegan diets for their pets? Oh, that's that's fucked up. I don't know much about that, so I I can't really comment on it. Mm-hmm. But I had like a question to ask Armin. And so you brought up that meat and like all animal products are very cheap, but does the price of meat morally justify killing animals, killing a being? No, but it doesn't do the opposite either. No, but... (laughs) Because, okay, here's the thing. He's like, it's kind of like asking, because there's, I don't see it as immoral... It doesn't push it either way, so I'm just gonna save money. It's kind of be, it's kind of the difference between like, do you, are you gonna paint the uh, room blue or red? I'm like, well, I don't care about the different colors, and blue seems to be cheaper. You, and then you come kind of like, well, does it the cost of the blue being cheaper does it morally justify for you to pick blue over red? I was like, well, I never saw this as a moral question to begin with because morally they were both in the same level so i'm just gonna save money you know what i mean so for you to ask that question to that for it to be justified you have to first assume that i saw them morally in two as not the same for for all of a sudden so if for example let's say oh yeah vegan eating vegan is morally superior to not being vegan but the price is just so good that it justifies it no because i saw them as equal to begin with the price I'm just going to focus on the price and other factors. You know what I mean? But here's another. Here's another, something I would say. But uh, I kind of disagree with Susan a little bit on this. If somebody, if I find that somebody is vegan, I would look more highly. I would see them as a because. Wait, am I am I frozen? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter. You can still hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. Even yeah. if I disagree yeah. with them on what matters. They, I see them as somebody that cares about suffering. Even if I disagree with what strategies will remove str- suffering, I see people that care about suffering, I see them as, you know, I look more highly to them as compared to people that don't care about suffering. So, I mean, in that case, I would agree with you. But in yeah. terms of, like, if I find out a fact about someone's diet, I, I don't think about it that much. It doesn't change oh, good point. my if moral it... view of them. Like, I, 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 I was answering that from the place of my day-to-day experience of finding out a new fact about someone that happens to be their diet. In my oh. day-to-day experience, that doesn't change how I think about them. But if I was to break down and think about it on this grander ethical level, yeah, you're probably right. But like, mm. just at my oh my coworker, there be like I don't care. Actually, that's a good point because if somebody is vegan for religious reasons, I think less of them. But if they're <laughs> vegan, but if they're vegan for moral reasons, even if I don't agree with what strategies work best, I think more of them. Because they're trying to reduce suffering in the world. Okay? They're trying to reduce suffering in the world. And that's great. They care. I don't I don't even know how much I often think about how little or how much I think of someone else. You know? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm obviously doing it self-consciously. Everyone's yeah. making those judgments subconsciously. Yeah. That's not a question. But am I consciously considering how new facts that I happen to know about a person consciously and actively influences how much of an esteem I hold them in. Well, I mean, technically... You're saying, just... Upon my own self-reflection, 
Yes. Personally, that's not really how I think. Of course. But 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 it's impossible because the actually what you do is every view you have your society is your mirror, right? So <laughs> even when you you pass judgments on people, to be able to pass judgment on yourself. So every so every sense of value or worth that you have for yourself is based on evaluating how how you judge others and how other people judge you. Uh, you wouldn't have you wouldn't be able to judge yourself if you weren't doing that. Like you, everybody, like the yes, whole idea. And- of, what? <laughs> I said yes, and like I mean, maybe that speaks to part of my kind of agnostic so, attitude on the subject is like I don't pass judgment on what I eat so I'm not thinking about what other people eat <laughs> like, and, exactly and, for that reason like yeah, I'm not okay. mirroring it because it's just not on my mind you might yes yes I see that I see your point yeah okay but on that note um I have to go because I have to go to bed really early okay because I have to wake up for our talk tomorrow at five in the morning and um, which i know isn't that bad for you know a lot of people but i'm not used to it anyways so i hope you guys have a good night all right bye that was fun good thing i asked you a couple of questions Susanna, you should talk more without me asking you questions like you should be like i have something to say because i mean but i would but i, I uh, haven't had something to say i just like okay. watching the shit fly okay uh, yes. okay <laughs> as long as, as long as you feel as long as we're not like shutting it down or anything like that because no i'm not some yeah beta i'm gonna sure. let you know what i think god yeah. damn <laughs> it's a beta, <laughs> beta. <laughs> beta. <laughs> i ain't afraid of y'all come on is that, is that a uh, thing for girls, alpha and alpha the girl the girls have alpha females yeah, that's a thing. I, I don't thing. think that, I don't know. Like, but yeah, it, it starts it, from like those red pill movements, which are way more male dominated. So I don't think so. I mean, also, it's called I was making a joke. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, good. So, go. Yeah, have a good night, guys. All right. Bye. So, I mean, like, I know you, you had a conversation with Cosmic Skeptic, but have you thought of. Uh, debating other vegan activists like vegan yeah. gains or Ve- of a sm- like uh, intellectual types like peter singer and people like that yeah sure i mean if they have me i don't think they'll have me uh, vegan gains will be open like especially you both would agree on like atheism and stuff like that so you could have a conversation with him on atheism and veganism yeah sure that sounds good i was gonna say something i forgot oh yeah d- what if you okay? What if I what if I show you guys that what if it was proven to you that if I, let's, say, let's say you're you there's a gazelle okay and if you kill this gazelle and eat it the pain that the gazelle is going to go through is going to be significantly less than if you just let it go because it's about to get like hunted by a tiger and the tiger will like the death was going to be very slow very long it's going to be torture but if you were hunting it and killing it and eating it it would be a very quick death Hmm. what would you think this is uh one of those things where like it's an exception to the rule if the rule which would generally be speaking animals lives would be better off generally speaking if you let them go but this would just be one of those expect- exceptions would be, to the rule wouldn't it how so how it would be wouldn't most animals the way that they die in nature is like cruel how is that most of them yeah i don't know the i don't know the statistics behind that you either die from starvation or from some other per- some other animal killing you mm. i don't know it seems very fast I guess it goes to whether or not you think that the joy that they feel momentarily after you, after you uh, sort of let it escape, outweighs the pain that it would feel. Yeah, but then would you be okay with it if I showed you that? If you sh- if you gave me like a hardcore deterministic outcome of this or everything. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so.
I'd want to minimize the amount of pain and suffering. So you're, you guys, both of you, even if we disagree, you guys are consequentialists and you, you're consistent. So that's good. Like other people are like, murder is bad just because this killing is just bad. Okay. Like what? Okay. What are you? What, what harm are you trying to be like? No, just murder is just bad. Okay. You can't, you, killing. Just don't kill. Like, okay. But what harms and what misery are you trying? But you guys are actually looking at consequences rather than just principles for the sake of following principles right and, so and i and i should say that um oh man if there's any vegans in the audience are going to want to kill me i'm actually not a vegan yet um this is this is a conversation that i'm barely starting so it was cosmic skeptic that started convincing me the other way because i remember actually listening to um to a podcast that you had with a vegan female this was like maybe two years ago yeah and i remember being in the comment section being on your side and then fast forward two years later, Cosmic Skeptic comes in and starts talking about it. He slowly starts convincing me. I start listening to Peter Singer. I just okay. recently bought some Animal Liberation, Peter Singer's book. Now I'm sorely going on to the other side. So That's I'm in fair. my transition. I like right it because now. we have the book because I'm thinking of reading it. But like, oh, I just want to know if it's, is it worth buying it? I literally got it in the mail today. Oh. So here's what I don't agree with a lot of these vegan arguments. A lot of people are like, oh, you have to be morally consistent. And I was like, okay, why do we have to be morally consistent? And they, there's you don't no... Have to be. You like, don't have to be. Like, yeah. because morally consistent to them means like what? Means like, if I love my wife more than I love you two, what's the moral consistent? Like, do, <laughs> it's, does, she, does she have more value than you two? Are you, is she like, what does that mean, right? Like... I care about her more. Dear, mm. I'm not being morally consistent here, am I? I? I value her life more than you two. I think I, what they're doing I though is appealing her more than the rest of the world combined. So that is not like I was. I would watch the world burn <laughs> before she or die, right? Yeah. Does, does is that morally consistent? No, that's not right. morally consistent. But what are you gonna do? That's my brain. Like I think you can't treat humans. As if they are emotional as being. They're like, oh, you're not being logical. I, no, I am being logical. Ignoring emotions is not logical. Okay? Mm -hmm. Ignoring human emotions is not logical. So what, what Cosmic, yes, Cosmic Skeptic addressed that question when he was on trigonometry. He said that, well, the reason why he goes uh, with being morally consistent is because that's one of the things that a lot of people care about. People want to be morally consistent. So that's the first thing they that he think, that he that they he think. Attacks. Okay, so that's the wrong assumption. People think they want to be morally consistent. If you show them what morally consistent means, nobody would be morally consistent. Nobody is morally consistent. Well, I mean, this goes back to the ick factor that there would that they would encounter but as i argued or at least i tried to argue we have the ability to transcend that ick factor some of it some of them we can't some i think of, i think i think the veganism one we can some of them we can't yeah, when it comes to animals we can easily like unless you have like a severe medical condition or something like that but most of us can if, easily just not eat meat you know there's, yeah, no, there's no moral if, argument against not eating meat Okay, but if you, if you, okay, first of all, some egg factors you can get rid of, some of them you can't, some of them you can't get rid of by, by a lot of emotional, exhausting a lot of emotional will, right? And I'm thinking that if you're going to exhaust people's emotional will to be able to get rid of some egg factors that are so deep rooted, don't waste it on things that don't matter, okay? Like, because people have limited emotional, Stress capacity, okay? So this is not a limitless, you know, resource that you could tap into, okay? And I'm saying don't exhaust it. If you're going to make people care about anything, you have achieved more than most. Most people don't care about much. If you just get them to caring, to, and from not caring to caring about something, you have done a lot. So... Given, like, people are like, okay, well, if you care about that, why not just do that as well? I'm like, this because this is not a limitless resource, be careful where you spend it. If you have people's attention and people's um, care, spend it on, like, okay, if you can convince somebody 
to all of a sudden go from being meat eater to being vegan. And if you, if all that time and energy was focused on like, hey, I don't know, r- r- let's start writing letters to our Congress people and tell them that we do not like how this solo co- company is treating animals. Okay. Give it, you know, I think you would have gotten a much bigger bang for your buck. What do you think, Vikram? I want you to speak mainly because you're the you're the actual vegan here. So I presumably you've thought about this a lot more than I have. Yeah, I'm just trying to like uh, be sure I understand what Armin said. Uh, do you mind just because um, I'm not sure if I followed with what you said. See, you have if you could make, convince somebody to change their li- entire lifestyle. You have done some very effective marketing. That's not very easy to do. You have got them them to get emo- over a lot of emotional barriers uh, and ca- make them care about something that they didn't care about before. That takes a lot of time, energy, resources. Good job on you on that, right? But imagine if one-tenth of that resource and attention was spent on that person could have get them to like, hey, can you just write a letter to your congressperson? This is not your li- a lifestyle change, okay? This is just about getting a bill passed, okay? And imagine for all the time that you, resources that you spent on, you could have made, ten, well, every one person that you managed to get to become a vegan, you would manage to get like, I don't know how many people to write this letter to a congressperson, okay? And then this congressperson like, holy shit, we got like a fucking, you know, 10,000 letters from my constituents telling me that this motherfucking company is mistreating animals and we need to pass a bill that makes us illegal, right? Not only you will reach more people, the, the result of that is probably going to save a lot more animals from misery than one-tenth of those people changing their lifestyle, okay? Like, I think you would have, like, given the amount of resources and emotional exhaustion, and you know, that would take for people to care i think you would have just get a much higher return on your investment if that was the focus on your activism again i'm not saying don't go vegan i'm just saying i'm in favor of making the right investments so to, to reduce the most amount of misery like first that's an area like i'm not an animal rights activist i'm just a vegan but if i were to be an animal rights activist my answer would be that it's not an either or situation. So what you seem to have done is like this false. That's uh, what I said. False it is dichotomy. An, no, no, no. I, that's what I. That was my original point. It is an either or position, because you have limited resources, limited people attention that you could grab, limited uh, emotional stress or caring that you could get from people. This is not like it. You say it's not an either or. It would that you would be right. If you have endless supply of marketing power and people had endless emotional capacity to exo- to consider changes and endless amount of care that they could give to things, number of factors that they could start caring about. But right. given that this is not an endless resource, if you think of one person, you would like, okay, for this one person, is, you, could do, you could do both, right? I mean, why didn't you? Why didn't you do both? Why are you not an animal rights activist on top of being a vegan? Okay, it seems like for you it's an either or situation. I'm just saying you can't do everything, right? So it is an either or situation when it when it comes to the fact that you have limit. Th- there's a limit to the things that you could do, and there's a limit to the things that you could expect from people. So it is an either or situation. Yeah, my response to that would be that you know when we look at say atheism, right? Uh, there are multiple approaches that people take. Some take the approach of Aaron Ra or Matt Dillahunty, which go like very uh, abrasive, very aggressive atheists who are like insulting theists on the streets, demanding them. And then on the other side, you have more people who are like street epistemologists who will be going and having these very polite conversations where you challenge your belief without being aggressive. In a similar way, there's not one approach to improving the movement and with veganism as well there's just not one approach of like convincing people only there's also it also uh, comes to 
uh, getting legislations and regulations and policies change, and those are okay, happening. Great, okay, great, 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 great. Wait, 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 I'm not done, I'm not done, I'm not done, I'm not done. If you look, in fact, at how successful the animal rights movement have been, it's, um, I, I, I might even say that based on what I see of the animal rights right now, it's going at, it's in, it's in like the impact that it's having, it's probably at a rate that's like, if not higher, but at least as high as the atheism one. Like yeah. both movements are growing. I don't, but I, I might, I wouldn't be surprised if the animal rights movement is way more successful than the atheism movement. Okay, so but you're making sure. false comparison because what I was comparing to what it could have been rather than comparing to the atheist rights movement, like that doesn't no, no, make sense. No, 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 that was like a side oh, point to a big yeah, point. It was not like, no, a, it's not it, like an anti-atheist point. But it's a, false, it's a false point to make because what I'm saying is that it would have been a lot more successful than if they, if you use the strategies that I'm advocating, okay? But, but they are but, doing it, though, right? No, but again, I already, you're not, policies, don't, you like don't that. listen to my responses because I already addressed this. I kept on saying a million times that I know they're already doing this, but I'm talking about a whole bunch of the, the vegans that are making it like either you go vegan or fuck you, right? I'm just saying a lot of that, if it was focused on like, hey, you're my ally, even if you're not a vegan, but you're focusing on misery, of reducing misery, it would have been better. I don't, I'm not disputing whether... A They've done a lot or not. I'm just it would have been a lot more. They would have achieved even more than they have achieved if a more focus was on reducing misery of animals rather than just not killing them. Okay, I that's what I think. Okay, and you're if you're saying it's not either or, then let's apply your standard. Okay, so you're saying there's different strategies, all should be applied, everybody could use their strategy. Okay, then my strategy is not to go vegan, my strategy is for calling out for. Is removing, reducing the mis like trying to get advocating for more people to speak against the misery that animals go through in animal farms. Okay, so you're saying it's not either or, you could do one of these. Okay, then I don't pick vegan, I pick being an animal rights ad advocate. I mean, if overall you end up creating more vegans, but you yourself are not vegan, no, I'm not creating guess... vegans, I'm not, I'm not advocating for people who go vegan. I'm advocating for more people to speak against the way animals are treated. They could still be killed and eaten, but the treatment of animals in animal farms need to improve, and more people need to speak again. That's what I'm. That's my animal rights advocate, uh, you know, activism. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to demand. But the animal rights movement is about encouraging people to stop not just veganism in terms of food, but also in terms of lifestyle. If we are trying to move people away from consuming animal products, so you just contradict. We... So you just contradicted yourself because that's what that's my problem with animal rights activism. That it's all about just rem not removing, not produ uh, not consuming animal rights, animal products. I'm saying it shouldn't just be that. Yeah. I'm saying it should be just removing animal misery. You could you could consume animal products. That's what is missing. I think this is the the attention, the focus that the animal rights movement has had on just not consuming. And I say, and I'm saying that other the missing part, the part that they should focus on more, the part where the harm is, is just removing the misery, keep the consumption, but with better conditions. Better conditions. I ask for better conditions for animals. You know, like uh, when we. Or let's imagine like uh, someone who lives in Egypt, let's say, or Egypt or Saudi Arabia or Iran or like any of these countries. And that person, let's say, makes some blasphemous remarks against her religion and that person ends up in jail. Would you fight for that person's, uh, for that person to be better treated in jail or would you Great. fight for that person to be taken out of jail? Great question. If I know that there is no way that I could get that person out of jail... I'm going to uh, uh, fight for better treatment of that person in jail. But with animals, it is it is possible to get them out of the factory farms and of the industry altogether, right? It's not like, oh, you'll never be able to get them out anyway. In fact, yeah, it's been happening quite a bit. It have make Many that farms have turned into sanctuaries, for example. All right, guys, I'm going to have to go because uh, I, I got to do something at 8 o'clock. Okay, okay. I have to go All soon, right. but I'll just answer yeah. the chrome. Then. Okay, go. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Good talk. Good talk. Okay, so here's here's what I was saying. 
if you are, if I'm, let's say I am fighting for getting that person out of prison, okay? Why I'm fighting for getting out of that prison, on the side, you are trying to, you are trying to, while he's in prison, try to make his prison condition better. And you're not focusing on getting him out of prison. You're focusing on trying to make his prison condition better. I'm not going to go to you and be like, hey, why don't you come join me instead to get him out of prison completely? You're wasting your time. I let you're like, no, I'm not wasting my time. I might be successful. If you are, if you fail, or if he just stays in prison, he's going to have better conditions. I'm going to focus on you. Do you do you? You try to get him out of prison. I'm going to try to make his. I try. I'm going to try to remove the torture. Like he has daily torture. Okay. I'm just going. to, uh, My focus is on trying to remove the daily torture. And uh, that's my activism, to remove daily torture in pres- prison. And I think let's say like, here's actually this is a great example. Okay. Let's say that so many people decided to not even try to remove torture from prison because if they think that focusing on torture in prison is uh, missing the point, sh- these people shouldn't. We shouldn't even have political prisoners. Okay, all right. So you're either on my side to just completely topple this government, or you're not with us. So you're shaming like all the people that are trying to like just remove torture from prisons are being demonized, kicked out, not seen as allies, humiliated. Or if you, you know, you're not even you know, people that are even maybe like not saying anything against the gov- toppling the government, but just like, hey, maybe we should stop torturing people. And like, oh, you're not a true human rights activist because you're not actually saying topple the government. Fuck you. Uh, you're either in this, either top for toppling the government completely, or you're not with us. What if that kind of attitude made it su- created such a vacuum for people to actually fight for lack of torture that this government were like, okay, this is great, so, <laughs> more torture. Nobody's fighting against torture in prisons. I'm just gonna t- torture away, right? So I'm just saying that attitude of either you stop producing, consuming animal products or you're not an animal rights activist, has created a lot of people to wash their hands away from animal rights, a lot of potential allies that would have gotten on board with you if you accepted them as allies because they're against the mistreatment but will never go vegan. You, I think the animal rights activist movement has lost a lot of potential allies because of this. That's all I'm saying. This, because I feel like the conversation right now is more on like animal rights activism and what is the best approach. And since I'm not an activist, it's really hard for me to be able Why to are you not that side. Why are you not an activist? Because uh, I am in school that? right now and I need to graduate quickly. If I spend too much time on activism, I will fail my so course. There is an so... either or. So there is an either or because we have limited time, limited care, limited resources, limited everything. There is an but, either or. For me, I don't, I don't have, like, on my side, I'm not contributing to harming animals, right? Like, by my lifestyle is a, is a lifestyle of compassion, basically. So I don't, for me, I don't have the same, it's not like, if I was eating animals, then you would have a point. But the fact that I'm not, I don't really have that moral Do you think anybody that eats burgers but saves more animals from misery than the number of burgers that he or she eats this is fine for them to eat the burgers if oh if someone is say let's say someone's going to like farms and like freeing the animals but then on the side oh, they eat let's meat say like a politician just passed the bill okay. <laughs> that that made it so that the cages are much better um animal instead of like like made halal illegal so you can't just cut their necks and watch them die. Like every farm has to have those one of those punch, you know, you know those puncture guns. I don't know what they're called. That you just goes right into the neck and they just drop. Have you seen those videos? No, I heard them from you, but I've all the videos I've seen about factory farms are very different from that. Well, because the, you've seen videos from vegans, but I'm no, sure no. That... I mean, you, most most of the fa- factory farms are not following the proper procedures. That's what. That's exactly where we should be active. Imagine if more people were like, "Here's the thing." Every time you hear animal rights activism, what do you think? People think vegan. 
But if the image was like, dude, these animals are being tortured, and we if, if it would make it mandatory for every farm to buy one of these, to only kill them with one of these things, people were like, yeah, I can't get behind that. People we get behind that. It's very less low amount of investment from them in lifestyle and effort to get behind that. How, how is that? Like, people were like, yeah, I'm for that. People, you know, you could, then it would be a lot more... F- if people could say it that therefore that if this was trending, if there were polls showing that people will emotionally would be invested in this, then activists take the polls and show it to the politicians. Hey, they could get more votes if you get behind this. If you say like big corporations are mistreating animals, I'm going to force these corporations to only use these kind of humane ways. You know, these are popular movements, but that's not what people think about when they think animal rights. They think like, oh, vegan, vegan, vegan. I just think like whatever success that you have with more people going vegan the appeal of what I'm saying is so easy to get behind that like I don't know what percentage of people are vegan right now I have no idea Let, let's say 20% that's a very high estimate isn't it right it's I, not t- I don't know I, can, I, can, I have no idea that's impossible okay it's probably less than 10% okay but let's say it's fi- you the best achievement vegans five years from now 20% of the population is vegan, okay? That's amazing. Like, I never think you're going to get to 20%, but let's say you did, okay? But I would, I can tell you, 90% people would be able to get behind what I'm saying today. Today. Like, who would say, like, hey, we could treat animals that we eat. Do you think, like, should they suffer before they die? Or should we force companies treat, to kill them without pain? People are like, no, let them suffer. I like my, I like the taste of my meat with a little bit of stuff. All right. Who would you I'm moving your mic. So you you so, kinda cut out, so I the last part I, I heard like, salt and that is when you could just cut out. Okay, so I'm saying that let's say you got twenty percent, okay? But I'm saying yeah. even today, today even I think more than ninety percent of people will get behind your message right today. If you okay. say we want big, we want to force big corporations to not for animals. So you saying the videos that you're saying that it's most animal farms, right? Let's say governments force the companies to only use the guns, the punch guns. I don't know what they call that. I'm telling you that with low suffering, not, more than ninety percent of people would be able to get behind that bill if you if you promoted that bill. Like I'm like how many people out there do you think if you ask them do you, the burgers that you eat, do you want them to suffer slowly before they die, or do you want them to die before without any suffering? How many people do you think you were like, oh, let them fucking suffer? I like, I like to enjoy, yeah. I like the taste of my meat with a little bit side of suffering. That's what I prefer. How many people do you think will say that? I think if you actually said, get more people, it's easy. I think that's so easy activism that is being, that is being ignored. Because of this principle stance that I'm against cur- killing, period. I'm against killing, period. Think, I think a lot of people are missing that easy grab. I mean, people are already against big corporates, okay? People are already love not su- you know, animals who are not suffering, like are anti-torture, okay? How easy is this? This, this is, you're saying, oh, they're already doing that. They're not, comp- you know, this is, they're not doing that relatively because this is, that's why when you say animal rights, but people come to people's minds is not what I'm saying. It's veganism. And that's why people are like, mm, I don't know if I want to get like vegans, well, animal rights, vegans, like people that 80% you, you, you're you not going to get. I'm saying if animal rights was branded as what I'm saying, you would have re- removed a lot of misery. That's all I'm saying. If I were to, let's assume, if I were to say that uh, you're correct, it's not, animal rights activism is not done in the right way, mm-hmm. Would can I still state that even then, veganism is a morally superior option to than non-veganism? Yeah, um, I mean, it is, even if you're wrong, because you care, okay? So, I mean, most non-vegans' arguments against veganism is shit. Okay. <laughs> so I mean, it tastes delicious. Yeah, Therefore, so, it is okay to kill an animal. So vegans in general are care more, so they're superior in that way. But some of them don't care. Some of them just enjoy 
saying, uh, telling, feeling superior. So by calling other people, but I mean, let's it's the same say, with like atheism. Like every group is gonna have all kinds of. People. I just wanted to clarify that I'm not saying all vegans are doing it for the right reason, but let's assume most of them are. Okay, so that just by that, I just care. I just think vegans. But here's the thing: there's a lot. It's not just veganism. Okay, there's a lot of other things we could be doing that we're not. At some point, yeah. you have to pick and choose. At some point, you have to pick and choose, right? I could be, I mean, why do I, why do I have this headphone, okay? This is Bluetooth. It's convenient to have not, wi not wired for me so I could run with it. I could have been, I could have donated the difference to charity and just have it a wired headphone instead, okay? Like, I could have, right? Why do I have a TV? Why, you know, why do I, why, like, there's, why do I have air conditioning? I could have just not pay the electricity for air conditioning and do all these live streams in fucking heat in Philippines and just pay the made that like there's is veganism superior? Yeah, but a vegan that is not donating money to Darfur is less, you know, like me and you are less superior than, morally than the person that is not donating everything they fucking own to charity. Okay. But at some point we're we're emotionally n do not have the full capacity to care about everything. Okay, so what I'm saying is instead of asking people to care about everything, just encourage them to care about something. Okay, just something. Okay, mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm saying. Would, <laughs> you, would you be interested in debating vegan gains or ask yourself or yeah, rationality yeah. rules or any of these people? Definitely, definitely. I don't know how to reach them, but hopefully, if we are seeing this, they could just contact you. <laughs> It. Yeah, but Follow yeah, I know that most it, of it I, would be down to have a conversation with you. I guess both on Twitter and link to this video. Yeah, actually, yeah, I could do that. Okay, <laughs> wait for the video. Well, let me publish this video. By the way, I haven't published your the one on one that we did. I will soon, but um, I will do that as well. But as I, I, um, I just trying to get these more, uh, group ones out earlier. Uh, but yeah. But once and this one is out, just link to this one and tag them and tell them if they're interested. Just to, to like end on like something you and I maybe could agree with, or maybe we won't, but we'll have a conversation for next time. When it comes to like messaging, since I'm in marketing, so that's kind of what I study, I do agree that a lot of times people who are very passionate about a movement, whether it's atheism, veganism, Christianity, like whatever, when people who are very passionate about it tend to have very horrible messaging. Like you'll have atheists who call theist uh, religious or like you'll have vegans who call animals eat meat eaters, like all kinds of names. Like do you feel like uh, we as atheists, when it comes to atheism, have a responsibility to ensure that our messaging is better? Depends on what your goal of your messaging. There's sometimes some of the messaging that is might come off as very aggressive to religious people was intended for other atheists. Right? Yeah, but it's like sometimes, a chance, right? No, I mean, okay, so I don't, like, for example, I think when I talk to religious people, if I call them, you fucking idiot, how could you imagine, like, sky daddy, blah, 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 like, hey, come on, like, are you serious? Like, that's not, like, I don't, I mean, I think that's people are like, oh, it takes all kind of strategies, but I do, but I don't agree with that because I think some strategies work better than other strategies. Okay, so, but as that's true, that's not going to work for changing minds of religious people. But sometimes we're just atheists hanging out, and we just want to. We're not trying to convince theists to be atheists. We just want to make fun of religious arguments because we're just together and we want to have fun, right? So sometimes we're just talking about like stupid, you know, religious arguments in atheist circles because we're just making an atheist community. And it's the same, I mean, so if Muslims do that about Christians and atheists and that's fine. I'm not against that as well, right? Um, you could tell them how ridiculous we are. I mean, that's not a very effective strategy if you're talking to an atheist. Um, but if you want to do that in your community because you're bonding, that's fine. And so that's so that's two motives, but there's also a third one, right? So if you're talking to a religious person and trying to change your, their mind, your strategy, I think, is different than the messages that the memes or videos you create for other atheists. Um, but also sometimes your message is neither change neither for atheists 
it is for religious people, but you're not trying to change their mind. Sometimes you're trying to tell them that you don't get to tell me what to do. Right? So a lot of people, when I had the Allah has gay video, people are like, what is this ajeeb? Do you think Muslims are going to become, leave Islam because you're telling them Allah is gay? Like whose mind is this going to change? i like, I wasn't trying to change their mind. I wasn't trying to create ex-Muslims out of Muslims with the Allah is gay video. I was just trying to tell people, you don't get to tell us what to say. That's all that, yeah. So. Yeah, that video, like, I mean, the way you did it too, it was a very positive video. It was no, it, it, it didn't come off as hurtful by oh, any it, means. It, to you it didn't. This was the most offensive content that I created, like to a lot of Muslims. I've never gotten wasn't more... Wasn't burning ang- the Quran way. No, no. This was a lot more. The two times that I had the most angry reactions from Muslim was the times that anything is holy, Islamic... Get, was mixed with something gay, right? Yeah. So the gay Kaaba got me so much hate and death threats and reactions, and the Allah has gave sign. N- the, the Quran burning didn't even come close. And to me, this is not even close, not even a, like one, a th- one in a thousand. Um, and to me, it's such a, it shows how homophobia, how common it is in the Muslim community. Do, you, do you, it's gonna it will get me a lot of hatred right something i've been thinking about quite a bit do you think people like christopher hitchens or richard dawkins are effective at convincing people towards atheism or do you think they are more convincing to people who already agree with them like when it comes to that very aggressive attitude i think the results show that they have been successful at changing people's opinion like i've I've seen so many people say that, I mean, again, it's just not scientifically, so maybe I should take it with a grain of salt. Um, but I've, I've seen a lot of more people say that Richard Dawkins and Hitchin and Sam Harris are responsible for them leaving religion than people like Carl Sagan for some reason, because Carl Sagan comes off as a lot less aggressive. Uh, Carl Sagan... I don't know if he calls him. I don't think he ever called himself an atheist. No, but all the people call like, him atheist. But yeah, like, yeah. He's an atheist, even if he doesn't call himself an atheist. Uh, but he is responsible for re- turning a lot of people atheist, though. But I would argue that Richard Dawkins is even more. The thing with being aggressive. Okay, here's, here's how it works. Okay, here's why I think it works. Okay, if you're aggressive on a person by person result you know conversion rate the conversion rate you're less successful right but because you're going to reach more people even though on a per person person you're less successful on a total number wise you're going to be more successful do you understand what i'm saying so if you're mellow and like not very passionate or aggressive the people that hear your message you have a higher chance of changing their mind but less people are going to hear your message because you're not going to get shared as much. You're not going to grab enough attention. So even though on a per person person, um, um, on a per person metric, you're more mm, successful. I think the number of audience that people like Dawkins have is so higher that overall they're going to have a much higher percentage of. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. how. Uh, that's how. I, if I'm not mistaken, that's how Destiny looks at it. Like when he's on the, let's see, he's on a platform that has a lot of viewers and he's debating an alt writer. He mm-hmm. might be very aggressive about it, but when he's having a one on one conversation, he's very mm-hmm. polite. He's like just having a polite conversation. Mm-hmm. And it's something that I, I, I try to do. Like if I'm having a conversation with, say, a friend of mine who's more conservative minded, on a one on one, I'd be very polite about it. But. Mm-hmm. <laughs> When I, if I'm on a platform where I know there's a lot of people listening in, I'll be a bit more aggressive or I'll be a bit more like poking them in a way. Just because yeah. I feel like from a rhetoric perspective, nobody gives a fuck about the logic. But if I'm able to come off as like, oh, I was polite the whole time, but look at how aggressive they are. From other people's perspective, I win by default. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I try. I try to. For, if you worry about too much, how about you look, and how you sound? It's not gonna. 
sound. I, f I found that just be tr if you're more if you speak the way you are the most comfortable with rather than what was going to appeal to people at the end of the day that's going to appeal to most people <laughs> because you just you just sound more genuine you just sound more natural if you're constantly like thinking about how is this going to sound your performance i think is going to drop i think I, I just that's why i just be like you know what fuck it if you don't like this, if you don't like the way I speak, just go watch another channel. Okay, like that's a that's my policy. I think you're gonna be more comfortable. I'm more. You're more comfortable producing content, debating people. If you just go with what suits your attitude. Yeah, I. It's very weird, but like a year ago, you and I had that conversation, mm. and you were telling me that I needed to get my rhetoric. Like, I needed to be a lot more careful because I was way too aggressive and I was not being <laughs> able... Cause, and you told me that most people don't care about logic because I'd be pointing out, like, look at the argument. It's invalid. Or this premise is unsound. And you were telling yeah. me that most people don't care about I, it. Well, I say that I say that too because still I say, okay, I say, like, what we're missing is the emotional appeal in our marketing, okay? I say I've had mo much more successful pointing out how unfair like hell is than pointing out in trying to you know in getting them to doubt their religion then showing them the logical fallacies in the arguments for the existence of god okay because showing logical fallacies requires some sort of form of intelligence which most people don't have but most people do have a sense of fairness sympathy you know care so if you tell them like, okay, fine, if I'm wrong, you're right. Do you think it's fair for me to burn in hell forever? That just resonates with people a lot more. Even if they still disagree with you, it's easier for them to see your point than a lot of logical facts. Because most people are dumb, okay? I mean, this is not an insult. I'm just saying it's just reality. It's just, like, it's just most people are dumb. But we shouldn't abandon dumb people. A lot of people are like, oh, fuck them, they're dumb. I'm like, no, no, don't fuck them. They're dumb. They're dumb. Let's help them. Okay. Dumb people require more assistance, not abandonment. <laughs> yeah. You know what atheism misses? That if it had it, a lot more people would be comfortable with it. Mm. It's, we don't, or we are not able to create the same type of community building that mm. religions are able to do. Like meeting in churches and listening to like the gospel singers. Or like having those rituals and things like that. Unfortunately, it feels like as a society, sec we don't have secular. I mean, BC, British Columbia has it in a lot of ways, but a lot of. Do you really think it's US, needed, though? Do, I mean, it is needed, but do atheists are responsible? Do, do atheist activists are responsible for that? I don't think. I, don't know. I think it, the market wants you to remove religion. The market will just give you the alternatives right away. Like, if you look at in societies where atheism is now common, they don't have, like, atheist community, like, get-togethers. They have, I don't know, tennis clubs and chess clubs or, like, you know, the alternatives are... If it, here's what I think. Like, atheist activism is kind of like this. Let's say you, you get insurance, okay? Let's say I get insurance and my house burns down and I go collect the money and I realize this was a fucking scam and this is a fake insurance company, Okay. Like, fuck, I was scammed. And now let's say you're shopping for insurance and I'm telling you, Vikram, and you go and you, you're about to get the same insurance company. You're like, Vikram, don't get this insurance company. They're a scam. They scam me. Don't get them. This is not a good insurance company. And then you come tell me, you're like, okay, then you give me insurance. I'm like, what the fuck? Are you? I'm not an insurance company. I'm, it's not my job to give you insurance. I'm just telling you this is a scam. Go find another insurance company. I'm like, no, you're telling me that this is a scam. So you give me an alternative. You give me insurance. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm not in a position to give you insurance. And I think like a lot of people are, like telling atheist, atheist activists like, okay, fine, give us an alternative. I'm like, there are alternatives out there. I'm just telling you this is not it. <laughs> okay, this is not it. This is a scam. Um, there are many alternatives. And, and again, the, the thing is that the beauty of not having religion for community is because different people need different kinds of communities. Okay. Like, if you're like, hey, let's atheist communities provide, like, an alternative. They, no, because not everybody's going to need the same thing. 
You know, once you realize that religion is not a good source of community, you're like, okay, when you go shopping for community, it's going, you're going to find something that rather than something that was designed similar for everybody, you go like, what resonates with me? What do I want out of my community? Okay? You might become a political, you might become an atheist activist yourself because maybe activism will give you community. You're like, no, okay, religion doesn't give me community. I'm going to become a political activist for this candidate or whatever, or for this movement. I'm going to become a vegan activist. I'm going to join a tennis club. I'm going to do a crochet and join, like, I'm going to go like people that love cats and create a community of cat lovers. I'm going to become Game of Thrones fans and we create a community on that. And we're going to meet up. I'm going to talk about our favorite characters. I, there's so many alternatives. Yeah, that's a good point. I feel like, but in the future, once someday religions will all die in a metaphorical way, not no one's gonna die, but right. <laughs> but <laughs> I feel like that will be what will happen. I mean, it's already happening in countries that, are, like in Scandinavian countries, where most people are atheists. So people are like. If you go there, you think that people are like, no, no, we're sad, we don't have community, or people are, no, they're not the happiest countries on the fucking planet. I mean, I'm not saying that atheism will lead you to happiness, because I'm not saying that, but at least those countries show that it doesn't lead to misery and sadness from lack of meaning and community, okay? Like, I'm not saying that's proof that it's better, but at least it's proof that you don't need it, you don't need religion. Yeah, but one, okay, like, it's going to get me hatred among some atheists, but most people are not convinced by, like, if you're going to, like, I hate this uh, stereotype of the atheist that goes around saying, oh, I, I defeat theists using logic and reason. Like, <laughs> or really few people in the world are convinced by logic and reasons. What I mean, there actually... are... There are some people, there are many people that are convinced by logical reason. We shouldn't abandon that. I'm just saying we should do other things as well. I'm not saying, I mean, I'm not saying like, let's not defeat religion with logic and reason. I do that. That's important. If that were to work, most, if not all, philosophers would be atheists. Like, because they are supposed to be the masters of logic, right? They, they they understand how to formulate arguments at a level that, like, that's supposedly just, the best in the world, but not well, all of well, them are atheists. Supposedly the best. But anyways, just because smart people that, okay, at the end of the day, more people thinking about the logics behind religion makes more people abandon religion. That has been shown, okay? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, so, I mean, I'm not saying that should be the only strategy, uh, but it should be one of the strategies. It should. I mean, that's what. That's the whole point of my book. I wrote. I mean, a lot of people abandon their religion because of my book. So yeah, so many people gave up on their religion just because of this. And this is basically. This is not emotional based. This is based on logic. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, it's a really good book. I, I don't really discuss religion anymore. But every time I do, I just get the book out and just <laughs> <laughs> just follow whatever's on there. Okay, let's end it here. It's been two hours and twenty minutes, but yeah, this is fun. This yeah, well, it's it's been a really tough one. When uh, sorry, I'll just wait for you to turn it off. Oh wait, okay. <laughs>